And we're now live on YouTube. And we're recording. Welcome everybody to Manhattan Community Board 4 Business License Permits Meeting for May, according to the executive orders of our governor, Mario Cuomo. Um, we open meetings. Uh, we can also do on Zoom because of the emergency of the pandemic. So welcome everyone, um, both committee members and participants and applicants. Everybody's a participant actually. Um, we hear, listen to the applications. We discuss them, committee members first, and then we open it up for comments from the community. And then we take a vote. And we take a vote and make a recommendation to the full community board for, which meets the first Wednesday of June. And they adopt our recommendations or modify our recommendations and send our letters on to the New York State Liquor Authority. And hopefully the stipulations that we include in our letters are incorporated into the methods of operations for the licensee. Okay, we have a long agenda tonight. Uh, I hope that doesn't correspond to the length of time we are here together. So I always love being here together with everyone. Um, we have agenda. I don't know if everyone has a copy. We originally had 13 items on the agenda. One applicant has postponed, moved off tonight's agenda and we may see them in June. Um, and uh, just to say who that is, in case people are uh, here for that applicant, it is uh, the Gadfly Lounge at 258 West 50. Right. If anyone is they here, will not be here tonight. If anyone is here for the Gadfly Lounge on 15th Street, uh, they won't be here tonight. So. Uh, Unless you want to watch everybody else and listen to the other applications, you can leave uh, and join us in June. Okay, our applications are arranged by type. Uh, first one we have is item number one. On oh, wait, I want ah, yes, introduce introductions for those who don't know. I'm Bert Lazarin, co-chair of the committee. And I'm uh, Frank Kalazubiak, the other co-chair. And everyone else on the committee, please introduce yourselves. Twee Pham member. Kristin Burke member. Inga Ivchenko, public member. Rina Reveron. Wendy Gonzalez, member. Rob Walker, member. Rob is on the telephone. Carrie Keenan, member. Formal member. On the telephone, Mike Noble. I hey, we've gotten good at that. That was like a quarter of the time it usually takes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's get to the agenda. Item number one, this is a corporate change application. Uh, 752 10th Avenue, Edward Stars Corporation doing business as Kare Thai Restaurant. Is the applicant here? The lawyer for the applicant? We can't hear you. I don't know whether you are on mute or what. Nellie, do we have the applicant here? Yeah, she's it's right there. It's right there. Yes, Hi. she's here, but she's not her. But we can't hear her. Are you, hi, are you muted or, because we can't hear you. We're having difficulty hearing you. Maybe your sound is, is, has been reduced to zero. You have to improve, increase your sound. Oh, now she's gone. Now she's here. Hi. No, she's still on, we still can't oh. hear.
We're not hearing you, I'm sorry. Why don't we go on to the next and you see what your issue is technically so we could hear you and then we'll come back to you. Just gotta log out for it and come back in and enable her computer sound. Thank you, Mike. There's a suggestion that, ma'am, you may have to log out, enable your sound, and we come back in and enable your sound. Okay. Let's see if that does it. Is she back, Nelly? No, I don't see her. Uh, I hear it. She just joined. Whoop, where is she? Connecting to audio, it says. Success. Okay. Uh, do you hear her? Yes. I hear you now. Oh, I'm here. Good. Okay. Uh, my name is Sompon Mechanan. Uh, the president of Edward Stars Corporation under the DBA Kertai. We do the uh, beer wine license on 752 10th Avenue. Would you like to say something about your operation? We have you down 11 yeah, to 10 p.m. Yes. Monday to Thursday into 10.45 on, fr on Friday. Yes. Okay. So what is the change of uh, corporate change? Is somebody buying somebody else? Oh, um, uh, my, my nephew, he moved to another place. Then I'm the one that come back to uh, run the business as the president. Okay. And still under the Edward Star Corporation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's still within the family, it seems. Uh, any questions? Yes, from the committee? yes. Right. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Anybody no. uh, raising their hand from the community, Nelly? I have three hands raised. Three. Oh. Hold on one second. The first person I have is Jessica. Jessica? Jessica Jenin, are no, you looking to speak? My hand was ra only raised because I couldn't see myself, not because I have a question for this person. Okay. Okay. It's for, we're, we're for a later application. Okay. Okay. Uh, just, just to explain, uh, we're doing this by Zoom webinar, which means the only people seen on the screen are the, the committee members, the applicants and their representatives. Uh, everyone else is just listed as a participant. Uh, if you want to speak on a particular matter, uh, raise your hand when that matter is called and Nellie will move you into the main meeting. And at that point, you'll be seen on screen and we'll be able to uh, address everybody. Thank you, Frank. Did you said you have two more, Nellie? They, the, they, they put all, their hands down. They yes. put their hands down. Okay, I will entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion. Go Second. ahead. Okay. That we uh, accept with the uh, current hours okay. that they have listed and move forward with this application. Okay, and we have a second. All those in yes. favor? Aye. All those against? All those abstaining, eligible? Present, not eligible. Okay, you got it, thank you. Okay, moving on to our second category of applications, the alteration of applications. We have our number two is Levy Premium Food Service. They are gonna providing service at the North facility of the new Javits Center. Uh, just to fill in the committee, uh, right before full board, uh, this is the same. This is the same applicant that was before us last month. 
Uh, right before the full board last week, though, the applicant notified us that um, there was some misunderstanding between the Javits Center itself and the uh, catering firm they had hired. And Javits was uncomfortable with the stipulation that they had agreed to last month. Uh, they wanted to revisit the issue and come back this week. Uh, so they're here now. Um, in the meantime, Bert had actually did a live site visit last week. Uh, so can fill us in uh, on that at an appropriate time. Okay, thanks, Frank, and thanks, Bert. Uh, I just want to make sure that Alan Steele, who I see as an attendee, Nelly, maybe you can bring him up. He is the president and CEO of the Javits Center. I will move him over now. Okay, Brad on, chief operating officer. I'm sorry, who else did you say, Donald? Alan Steele. Okay, just move them over. Alan, you with us? See here? Yeah, I see him. I okay, see him. Alan, we see you. you. Okay, so thanks everybody. And thanks Frank okay. for the introduction. So um, I'm here representing the Javits Center, actually the New York Convention Center Operating Corp, which is a New York public benefit corporation is its name. And that's who uh, occupies and operates the Javits Center. Levy is one of our food and beverage operators. And um, as you know, there is a five level new building being erected and almost completed on the north side of the Javits Center. Uh, Levy and their lawyers appeared before you last month. I think that um, we regret that we were not more involved in that process. Uh, and otherwise we, we would have uh, been at that meeting and, and been more involved. Um, when the report came back to us uh, regarding the agreement that had been made by Levy and their attorney, uh, it was something that uh, the Javits Center had some difficulty with and, and wanted to revisit. So that's when I contacted Bert and Frank and uh, thank you for inviting us to come back and um, we want to revisit uh, the method of operation and some of the issues. So we apologize for going through some of this again but it's rather important on a number of levels. First, I just want to give you a little bit of background. I understand that the issue is the outdoor space. We're gonna to get to that, but I, I just wanna fill in a little more information on exactly what we're doing. The alteration application is for the entire five level building. I mistakenly called it five stories. Uh, when I went up and down the stairs on Friday, I realized five levels is really about 14 stories. Bert was there, so he knows. Um, <clears throat> it, and it's about 1.2 million square feet to the existing Javits Center at a cost to the taxpayers of the state of New York of about $1.3 billion <clears throat> financed by the legislature. And the Javits Center, of course, is answerable to the state of New York effectively is a state owned institution. Uh, level one, which consists really of four levels addresses an important issue, which is traffic and trucks coming into the Javits Center. I've experienced that myself late at night coming home from some community board meetings and being stuck on um, 12th Avenue going north. One of the beauties of this building is effectively four levels are truck loading docks. There's about over 480,000 square feet of interior truck loading docks, 27 new docks uh, being constructed in the lower level that can accommodate more than 200 trucks, which is gonna solve a, a big problem uh, that the neighborhood may have experienced. The second level is the atrium concourse and coat check. Uh, the third is where we get to the exposition hall. The fourth level has, I think about 15 flexible meeting rooms, about 32,000 square feet of flexible um, pre-function space. Excuse me for one second. And the, um, and, and the fourth level has the pavilion and terrace. And there's also a very uh, unique one acre farm behind that pavilion. And then there's to round it out, the fifth level called the overview is also uh, event space. I don't think there were any issues with the interior levels. It all centered around the fourth floor pavilion and um, terrace, which is probably, Alan can correct me, it's probably at about 10 or so stories uh, above ground. There is a, a, a significant outdoor area that faces west 
uh, onto the river. It also has exposures on the south, as well as when the south side just faces the existing Javits Center and to the north uh, on the back of or east side of the outdoor portion is the pavilion, which is uh, interior space that opens up into the exterior portion. And behind the pavilion is the one acre farm that's not open to the public. It will actually be operated as, as a farm. Um, there were some operating <clears throat> restrictions that were agreed to last month that we need to revisit. Uh, this structure is obviously tremendously important to the city of New York, to the state of New York, to the governor, to the legislature, uh, and the uh, everything about it, not the least of which is the cost, requires that all of the space be used to its maximum potential and, and benefit to the people of the state of New York. So for that reason, we are revisiting some of these issues. Um, the outdoor space will have multiple functions, including presentations, conventions, there'll be speakers, uh, there will be corporate events, there will be social events. Obviously, they'll be limited to five plus months of the year. They will take place during the day, they'll take place during the evening. Some may be larger, some may be smaller. There may be times and days where there are no events, whether they're just not booked or whether uh, the elements don't uh, support it. Um, the Javits Center feels strongly that we have to have the ability to use that to its maximum potential, as I said. So uh, we are um, unable to agree to just a limit of 250 persons, which when I listened, uh, I was at the meeting in April and I kind of listened to some of it and I, I went back and went to YouTube and listened again. And I, it seems as though that 250 kind of came a little bit arbitrarily, just was a number that was thrown out there. And a lot of comments were made about needing an acoustic study, which um, I'm surprised hadn't been done, but we did do it. We've hired um, Cerami. I don't know if John Houtenstein, Houtenstein is, is here. Uh, John, are you, I, I don't know if I see him. Hey, Donald. He is here. Yes. Okay, so I would, I would like him to be able to speak. Uh, John did, or his team from Cerami did a, <clears throat> sound study over the entire weekend. I did speak to John They today. They do not have the report ready yet, so we can't give it to you yet. But I think John has done some preliminary analysis of the data. And uh, I think he will be able to tell you that he will be able to put limiters on the system that we have in the outdoor area, a system that we will design with their recommendations so that it can be operated uh, within legal limits. Um, I know it's daunting to imagine having music on the outdoor space. I understand that, but this is a unique building. Uh, it prim primarily faces uh, the Hudson River. Uh, that is probably where most of the activity will be. And um, after I speak and after Alan speaks, I think John can give a brief report. And I, I think given the uniqueness of this building, the state owned property, uh, I, I think that I would hope that you can be more flexible in approving some of the methods of operation. Just by way of comparison, we did recently Little Island, which is not entirely compatible with this. So I'm not trying to compare it exactly. It's not exactly the same. That's just outside of your jurisdiction. It's at 14th street. And that was approved for a license it's totally outdoor space. It's about three acres. There's a full amphitheater in there. They're going to have concerts. They're going to have bands, um, a full music program throughout, which was unanimously approved by the State Liquor Authority. And one of the reasons why it was is because that also is on state-owned property, Hudson River Trust. And the chairman of the State Liquor Authority made a point of noting how important that is and how unique the space is mm -hmm. for cultural and other reasons in New York. Again, I understand Javits is not Little Island, but the point I'm trying to make is it is distinguishable from your typical restaurant rooftop bar or other venues where you may have a more strict enforcement of your guidelines. 
So um, here, I think that we need to maximize the occupancy of the space, uh, have music uh, that is controlled and under the supervision of our acoustical engineer. Um, the hours, we just would agree to have it all vacated by midnight. I think the prior month it was discussed uh, closing at 11 p.m. We would agree to have everybody out of that space by midnight. And um, I think that is all I wanted to say. And now I'll turn it over to Alan and then uh, have John address some of the soundproofing issues. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Donald. And uh, I guess I want to begin by, by apologizing to all of you for the um, presentation that we made at the last uh, meeting. Um, you know, since I came to Javits as the CEO in 2012, we've made a number of efforts um, to try and be a better partner to the community, including what we're doing now in terms of building this major expansion and particularly the truck marshalling facility. Uh, I remember one of my earlier discussions with my earlier discussions with Lee Compton, who was a board member from uh, Javits and who was on the land use committee at the time. And I asked him, what does the community really think of Javits? And he said, well, you're an eyesore. Uh, and I said to him in response to that, I understand that, um, but we're going to be the best eyesore we can be as long as we're here. Uh, we are here. We are still here. Uh, we've done a lot of work with uh, our own facade, our own facility. We've done a lot of work with the community. We have a number of programs now, including our Javits Juniors program, where we're supporting local high school students to uh, for their college, uh, their college uh, fees. We're working in a number of different areas to try and make sure that we are not just seen as a block to the future uh, access to the river. Um, and I realize that this is not necessarily something that you in the committee you're in now are particularly concerned about, but I would ask that you think about this in a slightly different fashion than you might simply from a normal rooftop experience. Particularly what I would like to ask is that you as a committee um, would plan to come and visit the space. Uh, I would like to give you a tour of the space. I'd like to give you a tour of it as we did with Bert just recently. So you can see the totality of what is actually being addressed. Uh, we are not trying to be more of an obstacle to the existence of the community or to the happiness of the community. We're simply trying to do our job. We're simply trying to do the thing that we're charged to do by the state, which is create economic impact for the city and the state. And we're trying to do it as effectively as we can. Uh, by being present, by visiting the space, I think you will get a better sense of that. Uh, and I know, I hope that Bert's tour gave him a better sense of what the space was like. Um, so with that, I pass it back to you, Donald, and perhaps on to, uh, on to John. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Uh, John, why don't you uh, talk a little bit about your findings and what you can do? Uh, yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as, as, as Don said, uh, we were uh, contracted uh, to conduct this study to um, not only better understand um, the context of existing uh, ambient sound levels or background sound levels um, in, around the, the Javits Center site, but um, to sort of look at that in, in the context of the proposed uh, use of the terrace. So uh, we set up monitors at both the, uh, the northwest and northeast corners of the, uh, the, the north extension of the Javits Center. Um, I, I wanted to understand what the differential was, if any, between uh, levels at 12th Avenue versus 11th Avenue, uh, given that we have, um, you know, the, we have the, the West Side Highway there, uh, we have some other potential uh, different uh, noise impacts. So those monitors were set up on Friday, they were picked up on Monday morning, and we were able to see the fluctuations in ambient sound um, on, on an hourly basis. And what that study showed us was that we have relatively um, consistent uh, levels uh, between the Northwest and Northeast uh, sides of the building. 
there's approximately a two to four decibel difference between the two sides. Um, all of that to say, um, we, we basically looked at the quietest, the quietest hour as a sort of a worst case um, reference point for evaluating um, noise from, from music. And, um, and so we took those, those levels and uh, looked at the context of, of, of music. Uh, the other aspect of looking at, at music is what is the prevailing uh, New York City codes regarding uh, music. And so there is a section of the code 24-231 that provides for um, limits on, on music, both in terms of overall levels and in terms of specific frequencies from uh, basically the, the base range of, of, uh, of music. So we, we took those limits and we back calculated what the, um, what the maximum levels can be on the north edge of the, um, the terrace, the, the roof terrace, in order to comply with those limits at the nearest residence, which is uh, a, a full block north of the, the Javits Center roof terrace. Um, so it's about 350 feet uh, from, from the building to that residential building. And so uh, what we were able to, to, to do there was to establish those, those limits that we would seek to achieve through the sound system uh, to be designed for the, for the roof terrace. Um, there are several things that, that can be done to help ensure that those limits are achieved. One, as, as Don mentioned, uh, we, can, we can integrate a limiting device into the sound system that would be utilized uh, for the, the loudspeakers. We can um, uh, look at the, uh, the distribution, the, the speaker selections, as well as the orientation of the speakers to uh, basically minimize the impact on those uh, residential buildings along uh, 41st Street. Um, so there, there is uh, there's definitely room there to um, design a system that works and that is um, able to be um, limited in such a way so that um, there's assurance that um, that the those those limits as they impact those residential properties can be met. Donald, I had just a couple clarification points about the new STIP form. Sure. Um, on the on the page where you give the breakdown of uh, capacity by level, on level four, which we're talking about the pavilion and roof terrace, you only have one total of uh, 1,500 for both. Um, does that mean there could be 1,500 people outside and the, or there could be 1,500 people inside or they could be divided between the two? Or uh, what, what does that number mean? Yeah, my understanding is that that 1,500, as you said, Frank, includes, it would be the legal occupancy for both the outdoor and the, and the pavilion. I, I think it's anticipated that likely both of them may be used. It depends on the size of the event. But conceivably, if the pavilion weren't used, you could have 1,500 people on the terrace or the rooftop. We don't. We don't. Excuse me, Don. We don't anticipate there being any circumstance in which the two units are used independently. The pavilion and the outdoor space would be used um, in conjunction with each other, so there would not be an event which was entirely outside. It would be entirely. Um, op it would be set so that it could be inside or outside and both at the same time. The idea being that, as you know, weather is unpredictable. Um, I doubt that we will get customers who want to take the risk that they have an event on the roof that cannot be accommodated in the indoor space. So we will be leasing them both together. Alan, the, am I correct, Alan, the bar is in the, is in the pavilion. Correct, yes, it is. Yeah. Do you have the maximum capacity for the pavilion? <laughs> 
sorry, a maximum capacity for the pavilion? Yes, the inside space. Um, the, the, the maximum capacity for the roof terrace as a whole is 1,500. Right, but how many people can fit in the pavilion? 1,500. <laughs> how many people? And, and 1,500 can fit on the outside terrace too, but they would not be allowed to be to, uh, to at separate events. There would not be 1,500 in one space and 1,500 in the other. It would be 1,500 in the entire space on the roof. Okay. And, and Donald, you mentioned that the roof would be closed at midnight. As I read your application, though, your, your license is only going until midnight. So every place would close at midnight. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Right, of course, right. the, the license is for the full building. Correct. Because I saw you had, I think it was 37 bars. So I assume that they're all night on the, on the roof. I think the 37 are what we have already in the existing building. In the existing building, we call it with the South Building. Yes, oh, I saw thirty-seven down there. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think we're not. We're not planning to add thirty-seven bars. Um, I think this. That's where some of the confusion on the application was, and the first time it was submitted, that we are actually looking for an extension to an existing application. I don't know any event, and I've been in the building since nineteen eighty-six that has ever had thirty-seven bars in the entire totality of the space, but I think that's the maximum capacity that was calculated at some so point. So you might want to, whatever we end up doing, you might want to look at the application Clarify again. that. Clean it up. The total capacity, so let me see if this is just for the new facility or the total, is 7,707. It's more than that. That's one floor. I thought that was the total. What was that? In level five, the overview says seven oh, seven thousand. Correct. Overview. So yeah, that's the, one floor, right? Yeah, the entire the entire capacity of the building is close to seventy thousand people. But and the that's, new that's building, the north that's the north building and the south building. No, just the new building. Okay. The, the new the new the new building by itself has two floors each of which are capable of about 7000 people the uh, upper level level 5 and the lower level level 4 and then there is the exhibit space which is capable of about 4000 people so it would be helpful in our form to have we have a maximum capacity for the new license you know place that would be helpful to have a number here for the toll inside and the toll outside, right? Okay, we can certainly do that. This yeah. is, I mean, this is all on the form. Okay. And and on on page three again to follow up on what Bert and Frank were saying, level one says uh, four level trash mark uh, truck marshalling. I mean, you are not going to license that, right? Are you? No. No, there are no uh, there are no plans to have any events in the truck marshalling yard. That is purely and simply for trucks. All the drivers, all the drivers drinking like crazy. <laughs> uh, I, I can only hope not. I can only hope not. But no, the the intention is to have that be a place where drivers can come in off Eleventh uh, Avenue can park their vehicles and wait for their loading dock to be yeah. assigned uh, and then brought them there out you know, once they're empty brought back out and wow. into our new exit which takes them on the 40th street and down into the um into the uh, the lincoln tunnel which is which is wonderful we we love it this is great so maybe um uh, don you could you could remove from your you know multiple space you could remove level the level one section right yeah, we can remove that. I don't right. think. And then add the number of bars on each level and, and explicitly say which what portion is outside. I mean, I presume the outside is only on level four, right? Yes. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's just clarification. I assume, the, I assume the number of bars is not fixed. Yeah, I think there are no fixed bars in the new space since it's all private events. I think they, I have to look at this more closely, right. but. They just may all be rollout bars. So when you file an application, rollout bars are not considered stand-up bars. There will, be, there, there will be many, uh, many events which do not have yes. any bars. Yes. So I have a question about the, I think you answer that, which is like the, um, well, you said there is going to be DJ and uh, live music. I presume those would be inside. We were thinking of um, having DJ and live music potentially outside, but I'm 
I have not yet seen the sound study which John put together. That may cause our thinking to be um, adjusted. So I'd like to see the sound study before I give you a response to that, Christine. It may be that we are looking at this and saying you know, live music outside because it cannot be controlled in the way that we understand other music can, that we should treat that differently. So if I can just reserve my reserve our position on that until we've had a chance to look at the study. But, you know, again, just to reinforce that we're not looking to do this to, co to cause trouble. The last thing that we want to do is have people complaining about what we're doing. We want to try and make sure as much as we can that we're complying with whatever the requirements are. And the other thing I wanted to say is that if there is a DJ outside, we could require them to tap into our sound system and not bring their own. So if well, there's, yeah, you know, that would be a minimum, right? Yeah, uh, and I think that makes sense. And so if, if there's a limiter placed on it, whether it's a live DJ or pre preset recorded music, it would be at the same level. Yeah. And the second question we had last time, I think we are concerned about is the door the garage door between the inside and the outside of the pavilion, right? Where uh, we have had in the past, Yotel is a good example. We have had the past lots of issues with doors and uh, music leaking from the inside to the outside. So if, if the music inside is loud and you are controlling the outside, but the door is open, it's just as if the whole loud music was outside. And on, on, um, in Yotel for, for a, a number of, of years, whenever they were opening the door, uh, all the building across the street, Manhattan Plaza, were complaining endlessly. And the whole issue was opening the door. It was not the music outside. So, so again, I, so I'm sorry. Yeah. So again, I think we we would like to have the chance to look at the the study which John has done. And again, I apologize that study should have been provided to you in the first pass round on this, but we haven't even seen it yet. We will look at it immediately. I think in the design phase of this, Christine, the the architect was very specific in designing the pavilion so that any internal music that would be heard potentially if a door was open would be directed to the west side of the building so that it would be directed towards the open space and towards the Hudson River. There was a, a, a very conscious awareness of the uh, of the um, the people to the north of the building and attempts were made to try and make sure that any noise would be directed away from them. So again, let us look at what John comes back with and we will you know, have a better feeling for what exactly can be uh, can be achieved. Right, Chris, you did circle no, uh, that, the no on closing windows and doors. Right. That was circled on the application. Yeah, part, part of the reason for that is that you, you know what it's like in August in New York. And if there is a summer breeze blowing, then it may well be that an event that is being held indoors may want to open the doors so that they can have a breeze blowing through it. Um, you know, again, we, we don't yeah. know quite yet how this will all work out. Uh, we know what we intend to do, um, and we know what we would like to have approval for now. But as you know, these things are never written quite in tablets of stone. So we're always going to be observant of whatever changes there are in the uh, in the actual performance of the events that we would like to have. Well, we're, we're anxious to uh, to share our experiences. <laughs> yeah, I wish... And you can benefit from that, which is, you know, dealing with, um, I, I imagine the Silverstein building, Riverside, if you have a zillion of phone calls and people furious, etc., that's not going to help. And we've gone through that at Manhattan Plaza. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. The, uh, the, the reality for us is that the last thing we want is a facility that's going to cause complaints from the neighborhood. Um, it, it is why we looked at the design of the building and focused as much as we did on the truck marshalling area. I mean, you and I have talked before about buses and trucks. And um, the reality for us was that if we could get the trucks off the street, that was a huge improvement in the environment and a huge improvement in traffic conditions. Um, we've, we think that what we're doing up on the roof is sensitive to the community. We certainly understand concerns in the community because this is a larger 
space than I think any other that uh, we're seeing, at least in, in CB4's territory. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said to, to Frank and to, to Bert, we would like to come to a conclusion that is mutually satisfactory to all parties. So we would like to have further conversation. I would like to have that with you in the light of you being able to see the facility uh, because that does help. And maybe Bert, you could, I, I hope you found that that was helpful, but if you I could do. see it in the light of the facility, I think it might at least give a, a context for the discussion, even though we might disagree at the end of it, it'll give a context for the discussion that's based on reality. Yes. Any other committee people have comments, questions? Inga. I do. Um, the, oops. Okay, sorry. Um, Christine, wasn't there a building being built that's closer than the residential building that they're measuring from? Yes. There's something called uh, the, the slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse, it will be the a slaughterhouse is going right. to build. To and right to the back of it. Right. Yes. So that will be very close, sort of across the street to the yes. west, to the east. To the east. It'll be actually backing up on it almost. But, but just to be clear, the portion of the rooftop that will have these events is the west. Is on the west side, and the pavilion and the farm are between it. So and right. the pavilion has a certain height. So People in that building, which isn't even doesn't even exist yet, I don't even think there's a hole in the ground. So who knows when that's coming? Uh, up to a certain number of floors, will not even have a line of sight to our outdoor area just because of the angle. Um, so I don't know if there are a few floors on top that might, but I would think that the great majority of that building will be blocked by our pavilion from even having any from our five level building plus on top of that the pavilion. Yeah, that, uh, that building is going to be a two tower building as it's configured now. Right. The configuration keeps evolving. One, uh, is supposed to be a hotel, one is supposed to be residences. I don't know if it's the final final or it's continuing. Oh, it is. It is the final final. It's residence, right. Residence on one and hotel on the other. Um, and it's on the right behind them on the North. west side of 11th North. Avenue. But right. So, so it's the east. It's yeah. So it's east of the Javits roof. Yes. So if you have fifteen. Space yeah. Is as Donald said. Is on the west. The pavilion. Right. So it's basically block. one block away. Almost. Half a block. Um, half a block. Half a block because yeah. the pavilion only takes up half but, of the. You know roof. the thing we never understand. We yeah. never know is how the sound flows, right? Yeah. It's always and a big challenge. Like I, I am in an apartment. I live yeah. 350 feet away from a place which used to be a party space, mm -hmm. and like I can't. I could hear it like if it was inside right. the apartment. So half a block away residents 1500 people potentially on the roof outside with music live music and dj till yep. midnight seven days a week yeah so a couple of things if i can um certainly given that we're charged to maximize the economic impact of the building for the city and the state if we could do an event seven nights a week we probably would but the likelihood of that is extremely limited. We are not, even though we're the busiest convention center in the country, we're not that busy. So I think the likelihood of there being that volume of use is, is, is limited. Um, secondly, you know, the, the, the slaughterhouse project with which I have been intimately aware for, for quite a while uh, remains still a project. Um, we all hope to be able to establish more affordable housing in the neighborhood. I've been working, I had worked with um, with the land use committee to see if we could um, achieve a land swap that would actually create a better location. Um, the site K, which Javits is currently uh, has available, um, which is uh, on 36th Street. We had uh, talked about offering that as an option um, for a variety of reasons that has not proceeded. There, there are some construction issues with regard to the site that we're talking about, the slaughterhouse site. Uh, you may be familiar with where the Lincoln Tunnel comes out underground. It actually reaches the surface um, just on 11th Avenue. 
And we know from our own building discussions, because we had to build over the tunnel, we know from our own building discussions that there were a number of very significant requirements from the Port Authority in terms of protection of the tunnel. Um, and I do not know, I'm not familiar enough with where the project is right now to know, it, but I do not know whether those have been taken into account. So there are, you're right, Christine, there may well be a tower there. There may well be two towers there. One might be a hotel, one might be a, an affordable housing uh, project. They are not there yet. And as we are in Javits, nothing that we do is ever written in, you know, forever. Um, so I, I, I'm kind of reluctant to take too much concern about a project that will come down the line if a lot of things happen with the recognition that when it does happen, we will obviously have to take it into account because if there is um, a housing unit built on the east end of the Javits expansion, there will immediately be, and I've said this to Corey Johnson and others, there will immediately be a clash between the city, uh, the residents and the, uh, and the roof. I just don't think we can kind of prepare for that today in what we're looking at. We can acknowledge that there may be a future problem, but I don't think we can prepare for it today because we don't know when it will happen. Alan, Alan uh, with all due respect, I agree with you. Uh, however, I think the problem you're going to have is the, with the Riverside tenants. Some of them are affordable, some of them are market. People are not market people, do not take easily, you know, noise and nuisance when they pay a lot of money for their rent. Right. And so what we are trying to do here all of us is to prevent grief from everywhere, okay? We, we would love you that you go, you know, until midnight, until four o'clock in the morning every day, as long as it doesn't have an impact on the residents. It's not an issue. It, the only issue we care about is impact on the residents and, and sharing with you the experience we have had in other situation so that we don't go down a path where uh, you, you know, it becomes a real big issue. That's, we, that's all we want to say. We, we share, we, and we share that objective. I mean, as, as you can imagine, the last thing that we want to do is deal with daily complaints about noise levels from our neighbours, because mm -hmm. if that happens, then things will change. Um, so if we can get through the study, we'd like to look at the study more closely. Um, if we can have you come and see the space and then together we can take a look at what the solution is. It is our intention, and I said this to Frank and Bert when we first met, it is our intention to try and find a solution here that will meet both our needs and your needs. And that may not be perfect for you and it may not be perfect for us, but we would like to find something that works for both of us because we do recognize that at the end of the day, we're both responsible to the community around us. Okay, Tui? I see your hand is up. Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about um, some of the application notes on page one of nine, which is page two of 56 of the PDF. For whatever reason, there are these little dialogue bubbles next to these questions. And the question was, has applicant owner filed with SLA? If yes, when, if no, when do you plan to file? And it circled no, but then the bubble next to it says yes. Uh, I don't know, sorry about that. The answer is, no, uh, an application actually has been filed, but it needs to be corrected. And in conversations that I had with the State Liquor Authority, rather than amending the application, they asked us to simply file a new application. Okay, the next question has to do with um, page two of nine, which is three of 56. One question says, will there be dancing? And it says, yes. And then seven lines down, it says, will New York Nightlife Association and NYPD best practices be followed? And it's circled no. That seems, is that, that doesn't seem correct. The guidelines are, by the way, the, I mean, Don, you know that, right? The number of security people by number of attendees. Uh, I don't know whether it applies to catering and to yeah, I don't, private I parties, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it generally doesn't apply, the nightlife guidelines generally don't apply to uh, convention functions and, and uh, these kind of corporate events. They're more for nightlife nightclubs. So yeah. for example, it says one security guard per 75. I, I don't know that given the number of occupants that the Javits Center is gonna have one security guard for every 75 people there. No, I don't think so. 
So that's why, uh, you know, technically it probably is not going to comply with that, but I'm sure Alan can speak about the security staff that they have, if, if, if that's of concern to you. Okay, and then? And the dancing, I think there, you know, the, in the new building, there could be social events. There are these meeting rooms in there, there could be a wedding, and if there's a wedding, there'll be dancing. It's not dancing open to the public where it's gonna be a nightclub. That's not what is gonna happen there. But if there's a social function and if someone has a wedding and they want dancing, uh, by all means. Okay. Thank you for that information. Um, for page three of nine, where it says is a public assembly permit required and, and it's written yes. And we mentioned, you know, not having the number of, of 250. So what would that public assembly permit be? Well, for the fourth floor, it'll be 1500. Okay. And then under page five of nine and the PDF, um, it says, will the service and consumption of alcohol in any outdoor space only be via seated food service? No. Will applicant not allow standing space for patrons to drink or smoke in any outdoor spaces or on the sidewalk? Yes to smoking, no for drinking. I think I need clarification. So, so the, the question is written is in the negative. So uh, the, the answer is no, we will not... The answer is, <laughs> I'm, I'm confusing myself. Yes, there will be times when people are out there, they're not seated only. But, but there will be- But there, there won't be smoking. There yeah. will be no there smoking. No, we're at we're no smoking. Yeah. smoking. Yeah. People can walk around holding a drink. Yes. Correct. That's what you There saying. may be events where it is seated. There may be a business luncheon yeah. where people are seated, but we can't say that every time that will happen. There may be lectures where people are, uh, where there's a speaker and everybody's seated. There could be a lecture where everybody's seated where there's no alcohol. No, we got it. We got it. Yeah. And okay. It's throughout the building, I assume. Yes. Yeah. My last question was that I happened across Governor Cuomo's announcement of this particular extension and a nice video. Um, is there a date slated for when he's expected to be there? Uh, he was actually there today. Um, he, uh, he, at 9.07 yesterday morning, I got a call to say that we would be having an announcement today at two o'clock. So we had an announcement at two o'clock and he um, announced the uh, formal opening of the building. Um, between you and I, the building is not fully turned over to us yet. Uh, there are still a, a, a wide range of activities that need to be finished, including the completion of the farm, uh, which Brooklyn Grange are currently planting out. Um, so we don't expect the space to become available to us until late July or beginning of August. We do not expect, because of COVID restrictions, any activity in the building until probably the 8th of August will be the first event that we have, and that will not be on the roof. The following event, uh, which is the 28th of August, will also not be on the roof. Um, so at this point, we think the first event where we actually might have some roof activity will be in September, where we have a conference that is uh, coming to New York from Las Vegas because of the facility that we built for them. Uh, thank you. Any other? I just finished the tweet. Is that no, I, I'm done. Thank you. OK, thank you. Any other committee people? Questions, comments? Uh, Nellie, do we have anybody from the community? No, no one with the hand raised. I'd like to make a motion. Wait, wait a minute, hold on. Okay, make a motion. <laughs> well, I mean, do we need to table it until we have seen the, re the, the, the report? We can, I think we can do something contingent upon the final report, which I assume we're gonna get before the full board. Uh, John, how what about the um, going on site and checking it out as well? Because I wouldn't mind being part of that. I think there's an invitation out there. Yeah, who I did. Who on the committee would like to check out the site? I yeah. saw Terry, you shaking your head. Yeah. Twee as well. Twee, Christine, Inga, Rob. Yeah. Rob. So maybe Alan. Could we arrange, Brad, next week sometime? Or Absolutely. This 
absolutely. Yeah, let's let's find a, a date and a time that's convenient for uh, for the committee who would like to uh, attend, and we will make ourselves available to give you the tour. Bert, so, can I make a motion based upon the report and then what we see? We agree to a certain thing, and then based upon what comes in, that could change. Correct. Contingent upon. Uh, hold yeah, on. I, Gary, I think you say something. Hold on. I, I just wanted uh, some clarification on the vote. Uh, exactly that. If you could just restate what what we're voting on based on some of the um, information that we're still waiting for. Yeah. Thank you. Let, let me speak to that. I, I Six a.m. to twelve. Sorry. Go ahead, Frank. I, I think there are sort of too many variables yeah. to sort of start working in contingencies. I mean, you know, given what uh, Alan has said, I mean, one approach would be to simply proceed based on good faith and that, you know, everyone's going to get the report. We'll figure out what kind of, you know, music or sound can go on up there and implement it accordingly. But I think there are too many contingencies to try to figure out, you know, can there be a DJ? Can there be live music? How how many pieces of live music? Um, and the doors open. That's the other piece. Right. The open door. These are the pieces that are, you know, I mean. Right. So I think you we either you know trust in their good faith and just go forward with the application as is. Um, and if if things really change when people go on the tour, we get the sound report, we can, you know, change our recommendation at the full board meeting. Um, but I think trying to document it is just gonna make it more confusing. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to go forward in good faith then, based upon the six to 12, uh, seven days a week with 1500 people. Second. And understanding, I wanna, emphasize what Frank said. We get the report. We also take a, a tour. Those who want to take the tour. We get the report and if the findings of the report somehow give us a sense that we may want to put some stipulations on, we can do that at the full board. Agreed. And would the, uh, uh, the person who is uh, the engineer, the sound engineer, will be with us at the tour. Uh, we can ask John to be there, and certainly I'm sure he would be available if you uh, needed him to be there. That'd be good. Okay. So there's a motion and there's a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, all those abstaining. So am I reading it right? One opposed, one abstaining. Two opposed. Two opposed. One abstaining and anybody present not eligible. So I think if I do a quick count, it passes. What's the vote in favor, Frank? Uh, Bert, I'm sorry. Nelly, are you counting? Uh, yes. Um... You went a little too fast for me. I don't know who the abstaining was. Uh, yes, I think Twee was the abstaining. Correct. And Inga and Christine, you opposed? Yes. Okay, two of, those are the two opposed. Okay, give me one second. While she's counting, uh, Frank, can I ask Donald a question? Of course. Yeah, say, Don, uh, I'm just curious. You've had preliminary talks with the SLA. What are they talking about uh, an approval date? Uh, I wish I knew that. I wish I knew the answer to that. Um, I mean, we're getting alteration applications approved in about two months after filing. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, well, let's hope. Okay. I have uh, seven yes. Two seven. no, one abstaining. Thank you, Nellie. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. And okay. um, you'll so coordinate with Alan the time. And the two are going to arrange a tour. Yeah, and if I could just say, I, I really, really want to say thank you for putting up with our messing around the first time. And, um, you know, we will 
do what we can to make you feel as comfortable as possible with what we're proposing. So I look forward to having that to a set and to uh, guiding you around myself. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to do a time check. It's 7.32. We've gone through the first two items on our agenda of 12 items. Okay. Number three, 826 10th Avenue, Gardenia Terrace. Uh, is the applicant here? Okay. Would you want to make your presentation, please? Unmute, and you got it. You haven't unmuted. Okay. No. Okay, better? Yes, definitely. Hi, hello, everybody. Uh, we're applying to add uh, an adjacent uh, store to uh, our existing restaurant. Uh, the space is about uh, uh, 600 square foot. Uh, we have been open since um, May of 2017. Uh, we have uh, a record with the SLA, uh, good reputation with our neighbors. And we actually, one of the problems we have is that the whole space have one restroom and we are in dire need of adding more space. So the, uh, the added space is not really going to be used. Our capacity will still be under uh, 74, but we'll be able to add uh, more utility space. And your method of operation is the same? Same, everything is the same. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Uh, one second. What is what is the address again? It's 10th Avenue between 55th Street. Um, quick question. The, the hours are staying the same, correct? They're not changing. We're just increasing the number of seats, correct? Uh, yes, the hours are staying the same. The method of operation is fully the same. Okay, thank you. Uh, you said the capacity remains the same. Yeah, the, the capacity of uh, both spaces combined will still be under 74 uh, for the reason I, I just mentioned that uh, the new space will be used to add more utility like bathrooms and restrooms and stuff like that. Okay. If, to be clear, to be clear, Bert, the capacity is increasing slightly, but it will still be under seventy-four. Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you, uh, Christine. Yeah. The uh, on the uh, form, page four of nine, you responded that you are going to have a vestibule. Do you mean one of the outside vestibule or inside? Oh, the the same one that we do have right now, which is outside. Okay, so this, this vestibule is needs to be only limited to 18 inches yes. to be legal. All right. We're talking about inside. Um, so the vestibule you have today is not compliant with the, with the law. No, it is. It is, it is yeah. 18, 18 inches? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion? Uh, we forgot to ask. But I'd like to make a motion. Oh, wait, wait. Yes, we forgot to ask. Is there anyone from the community here who has to make a statement? Nelly? Yes, I have one person. Oh. And while we're moving that Christine person Norman. over. Okay, she was one of the people we had an email from. We also had an email of support from Kathleen Shreet and one in opposition from uh, Anita McDonough. Um, this is Christine Gorman. Uh, from the West 55th Street Block Association. We enthusiastically support the application. Um, Mr. Ali has been a great neighbor and it's a wonderful restaurant and I encourage you all to, to drop by. Delicious food. Thank you. Uh, now do I hear a motion? Yes. Well, I wanted to. I wanted to ask, um, what was the Frank in opposition? What did it have to say? Uh, 
simply that uh, she attended a meeting with the proprietor. Her video was dark. She did not give a comprehensive report. As the community questioned her, she became resentful, nasty, and aggressive. Um, we, we, we the, community, the community isn't against her. They just want this restaurant to take precautions and give some guarantees. It says that she's she met with a, a, a woman. That's that's what Anita says. This it's, is Anita. She, she forwarded the email from Mutaz Ali. Okay. I don't know if she mixed up the applicants, but the ray line is Gardenia Terrace. Okay. So we have. Anita is opposed. Okay. Now do I hear a motion? Motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Present not eligible. I think it passes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Item number four. We're staying on 10th Avenue. We're going a little bit below where we just were. 818 10th Avenue, the Sal Restaurant and Lounge. Is there anyone here representing the applicant? Hello, hi, yes. My, can you hear me? We could hear you, but we can't see you. Nelly, can you bring her over, please? She's over. She doesn't have a, a video. She just has no video. Yeah. Oh, okay. Could you identify yourself, please? Hi, my name is Isabella Nartesov. Hello. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Isabella Nartes. I'm one of the co-owners of Sal Restaurant and Lounge. Okay. And I, and we are applying. Oh, hello. And we are applying for a um, method of operation change to add a, um, a DJ in um, security and to also extend the um, back patio spaces um, time of closing. Could you say something about your current method of operation? Oh, How okay. Currently, it's a restaurant and lounge. We serve seafood, um, seafood boils, and we have two extensive um, food menu um, um, that we serve with some lamb chops, um, roasted chicken, and, and a lot of food. Um, we wanted to um, also do, we wanted to, um, to make the um, lounge aspect to be a little bit more for our guests that are attending as well. And the use of the backyard? Um, yes, we wanted to um, extend the back here from nine to um, to eleven. So you're saying you currently use the backyard until nine, and you want to extend it to eleven o'clock. Correct. Okay. Um, I have some questions. Sure. You're asking for a DJ. Mm -hmm. Yes. The way I understand it, you've had a DJ for a while. Um, we don't have a DJ. Sometimes we have um, the place booked for special events, which are private, and they bring in their own um, music uh, musician to do the DJing for them. So only a DJ at private events? They, yes, correct. Just private event. Majority of the time, the space I have a sense that you were asking for a DJ to legalize what you've been doing illegally. Right. Because if those private events are operating under your liquor license, which they are, they have to abide by your stipulation. So they oh. can't have a DJ either. Okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay at all. Yeah. Um, I should say we've gotten um, a, a stack of emails from the community that are very disturbing uh, with all in opposition from the 49 to 53rd Street Block Association from two nearby buildings, the Lloyd 54 condo, 
um, and 441 West 54th, all sort of repeating sort of a really a litany of bad behavior that you use the backyard well beyond nine, that you have DJs, that the police are, have to be called constantly. There was actually a shooting out front. Um, you know, oh, and that you uh, uh, are selling, uh, operating hookah without a license. Um, okay, for the backyard, the backyard has not been used to, since 20, since June, since August last year, 2021. That's um, one foremost. It has been closed since then. And we are in May 20, I mean, since August, 2020, sorry. And we have been closed. How about, how about, how about before that? Was it ever open after 9 p.m.? Um, maybe like after 9.30 p.m. Yes, correct. Because we either close now checks and, 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 and stuff like that. So that's the only thing. So other than that, that's the only time. That's the reason why we decided to do the method of operation change for that. In terms of shooting out front, there was never a shooting right in front of our restaurant. And the shooting that did occur happened in, um, in CVS. And it was not anybody that was in our restaurant at all. However, the, um, the ladies that was involved in that returned back to our restaurant. That's what made our restaurant the target. Are there questions, comments from the committee? Well, Frank, do you want to continue? Yeah, I was just going to say, I, you know, I wouldn't be able to, given the sort of stack of complaints we have about how they have been operating, you know, with people talking about constant 311 calls, SLA complaints, complaints to the police, you know, I would need them to sort of get their current uh, method of operation you know, back on track before I could consider recommending approving, expanding it in any way. Frank, can you read some of the emails that you got or are like some? Um, well, I don't know if there are community members here, Nelly, who want to talk about it. Any community people here? I No, there's no one with a raised hand and I don't believe there's anyone here that sent in an email. Okay, okay so, um, this is from the Lloyd, the president oh, of the Lloyd. Hold on. Uh, there's two people that raised their hands just now. Is anybody, those two people, can I ask, is anybody in favor of the applicant? Um, let me give them permission to speak. Hold on. Well, while you do that, let me, let me summarize this. So this is from the president of the Lloyd 54 condominium with 28 units. He said their, their board unanimously voted to oppose this. While they're supportive of a local business, sale has, hasn't proven to be a good neighbor. Uh, even before COVID, the level of noise from their backyard went throughout the night and into the early hours of the morning. Our owners have had to close their windows to block out excessive noise. The sale restaurant never made any effort to bring their patrons indoors after 10 p.m. or keep the noise down. Even during COVID, their ability to control the excess crowds outside of their facility was inadequate and also in violation of the city's ordinances and limits on occupancy level. Sale Restaurant and their patrons have never shown any desire to be good citizens, have repeatedly shown a complete lack of regard for our community. It is a regular occurrence that several uh, of our building owners have had to resort to calling 311 to report noise complaints after 10 p.m., almost a weekly occurrence during the spring and summer. Once sale closes for the evening, many of their pa patrons wander up 54th Street, loiter and congregate under a lighted awning, often smoking cigarettes and marijuana, shouting, littering, arguing, and generally being disruptive to those who are trying to sleep or needing calm. Most recently, several shouting matches and physical fights have broken out in front of our building, resulting in the police having to be called to address things. Um, Far worse and emblematic of their total disregard for their neighbors, it has become a regular occurrence when their patrons leave, uh, many of whom are obviously highly inebriated from being overserved. They often congregate on 54th Street, and unbelievably, many have taken on the habit of urinating on the buildings or between the cars in front of the various buildings along 54th Street. Okay. Um, Sabrina, was you sorry, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you, ma'am. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sabrina, would you want to hear another uh, email? 
No, I think we can start here from the community. Sabrina, there were, there were 18 emails just, or letters, just so you know, a significant amount. Yeah, and, and two of them, as I said, were on behalf of the, you know, the entire buildings of 28 units each. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. oh. Nelly, who are the, the two people who have the hands raised? Uh, the first person I have is Mario. Mario, you can speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, thank you for taking me. Um, uh, I am actually a neighbor, a uh, nearby resident uh, that directly oversees their patio. Um, I have sent several emails to uh, the owner, uh, had many conversations with her via email, um, very derogatory responses. Um, in addition, I have also sent you guys some emails about that and have a record of every instance that has occurred. Um, the, the, uh, the owner just mentioned that she has stopped using the patio um, this summer. That is not true. Uh, I have evidence of October 15th of 2020 uh, that she was utilizing the backyard until 10.42 p.m. Um, there's a litany of untruths that are um, aligned to what she is saying, um, and I am completely opposed to expanding any sort of um, opportunities for, for that particular business. Thank you, Mario. No problem. The next person is Leticia. Leticia, you can speak now. I apologize, I was on mute. Um, I also live in a building that is adjacent to the patio. Um, I do want to bring up one extenuating circumstance in this particular situation. Um, this establishment is one of the only establishments in the neighborhood that has an African-American and black clientele. And I have a feeling that that circumstance is playing a huge part in a lot of these complaints. So I really want to make sure that the board is taking this into account. This business is owned by a person of color and I hope that they can work with her in trying to enforce some of the rules that are already in place and also to help her with her business. Thank you, Leticia. Any additional comments from the committee, questions? After reading all of those letters, I can't support it. And Leticia and, here. Others, Leticia and others, although some of these complaints may be subjective, we seem to have numerous people saying that the backyard, for example, has been open well after 9 p.m., which is a hard and fast agreement they had with us. Um, they're not supposed to have a DJ and apparently have, uh, you know, uh, hookah smoking requires a separate license, which is good. And it's going on there. And my understanding is they do not have that license they need from the city for that. So these are, you know, these are sort of pretty uh, cut and dry uh, violations of their prior agreements with the, the community. I'd like to make a motion to deny. We should let the applicant respond. Yes, go ahead. Okay, hi, thank you for um, letting me respond. Um, some of these um, complaints and that you guys have been receiving, some of these 911 calls has come out of um, places where we have received threats and a whole bunch of things on our Instagram, which we have as well, which we call harassment and the police person next to us, we've been working with them to try to figure out a way for us to stop all of this. Um, we have made a lot of huge drastic uh, changes um, in the restaurant and the lounge itself um, since we have been um, getting, um, since we have the police officers speak to us and stuff like that. Um, we made a huge drastic change um, in, the, in the establishment. According to all of this, the guy said that in October we were utilizing the space. He has proof and everything. That is um, totally fine. We have not been utilizing the place once it start getting cold um, outside. And either way, no, none of our clientele will be going outside when it's cold because we don't have a 
a structural covering roofing for them to be sitting out there to be utilizing the patio. Um, prior to that, when the summertime occurred, we closed for six months since March all the way to, I know, not six months, since March all the way to, um, to June, then we opened. And when we opened, that's when we're using the patio. During that time, we were a little confused in terms of the um, outdoor seating requirement that the government has placed in when we can close and when we cannot, and what time we should close all outdoor spaces. And at that time, I did remember, I think going back and forth with the client, um, with the um, tenants upstairs that I believe is the one that I spoke just now, that we are supposed to close the all outdoor spaces at 11. And I believe it was a confirmation from Miss Nelly stating that no, if your patty, the patio is different from the front and the roadside, side. And we said, okay, no problem. Unfortunately, due to the Black Lives Matter, we have got increased number of a lot of African-Americans coming to support. And it, it was hard for us to control the crowd because it is it, it's, it's very hard. We tell them we don't have no table available, all of that. That's the reason why a lot of the front was clustered with a lot of people waiting for tables and 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 us flipping um and us flipping tables and stuff like that. So sometimes some things is slightly out of our control and sometimes some stuff is in our control and we do the best we can to control what it is in our control. Um, things have slowed down. We have closed since um, November all the way to February 12th. Then we reopen back up because during that time they close our indoors. So sometimes we do have the prison and the police officers tell us that they, they're receiving calls during those times when we were closed and they are aware that we were closed even during those times. And sometimes they're right in front of the store and they're getting a 911 call complaint about stuff that is not even true and they're standing right in front of us. I've had some several police officers that can also speak and vouch for that. So some of these calls, sometimes it's all being fabricated and we get emails, I mean, we get um, emails and stuff stating, oh, we're gonna boycott this place, uh, stating the N word, doing a lot of harassment and stuff like that. Take for instance, yesterday there was, um, uh, I believe on Sunday, there was um, something going on in the next door to us, which was Mama Sita. And somebody came down, oh my God, it's always something going on in South, and it has absolutely nothing to do with us. Anytime they see police officers in front of, um, by in front of the deli and us, they always assume it has to do with us. I took a video of that. Um, sometimes Mama Sita has crowd that is also very rowdy as well. Sometimes they come and stand smoking cigarettes, smoking uh, marijuana in front of our store. And we tell them, please, you gotta get away from ours. And take for instance, Cinco de Mayo, a lot of their customers waiting for outside was inside of our hutch thing in front because it was raining, standing there smoking cigarettes and doing whatever they wanna do. So everybody's, customers from Gardenia down to Mamacita down, Inti, Inti International is not always busy. So I would just say most likely Gardenia down and Mamacita down, all their customers usually stops in front of the deli and in front of our in front of our stores. And sometimes we don't even open. We sometimes don't open on bad weathers. We some, and we definitely don't open on Mondays. And sometimes we get calls when we come in on Tuesdays, we have um, an inspector there or a police in there or something that is claiming, oh, they got, I say, how would, how would, is that possible? And we wasn't even open on this day, operated on this day. So okay. some of the, some of it is also fabricated things just because they said they're going to boycott style and um, sales and have styles leave. There's okay. a lady that lived in the yeah, building it's, it's, that it's went and about, posted a whole bunch of things in the building for people to boycott and people to sign okay. petition and it's, send it's emails about, and stuff. Isabella, we, we understand the, the points you're making. Thank you. But as Bert said earlier, we, we, you know, we have a huge agenda. Um, so I think, I think we, we understand your position. Okay, Tweet. Yes, thank you. Um, I really appreciate the feedback because a lot of it um, you, don't, you don't really see. And, and in terms of the overflow and things like that and having to push people outside of the space that wasn't even there to patronize you in the first place. So I understand that. But what I'm hearing from Frank is sort of hard baseline rules that shouldn't be, um, uh, you know, shouldn't be broken. Like uh, already using DJs, I think I heard from her a reaction like, oh, we didn't know because they were private, we thought it was okay. So it sounds like that probably could be amended. We're May, we're going into June. So, you know, my question is, mm -hmm. if the com complaints and, the, and the, the sense is that we, we don't want to approve the extension, the two questions are, 
do we see about some sort of probation period for June and July to say, okay, well, she hasn't used any DJs. They're, the backyard is not open beyond 9 p.m. People are t- bringing their hookahs and thinking they can smoke on the street and they're, they're saying, oh, well, we're letting them do that or whatever it might be, right? Would we do a probationary period? Or conversely, do we say, if these violations already happen or they're going to continue to happen, what happens next? Well, we could, we could do one of two things. Um, if Isabella wanted to, uh, she could withdraw this application now and bring it again several months from now if she, if she believes she's demonstrated a better track record and perhaps even gotten some community support. So that's one approach. There's, there's not really a probationary period, but that would achieve the same thing. So she could do that. Otherwise, we would have to take a vote on the, uh, you know, the alteration application and recommend either approval or denial. I would want not a probationary period, but I would want confirmation over a length of time going forward from today that she's adhering that the facility, the establishment is adhering to the existing stipulations, which do not include a DJ, which inc- says backyard is closed at correct me if I'm wrong, nine o'clock, and we'll say close is closed. Not you gotta get your coat and all of that. Nine o'clock, Fino, end, goodbye. Okay, that if we get no complaints or minimal a number of complaints in the next three months coming in the fall, come back to us. Because otherwise, if, you, if you're gonna get a vote tonight, the vote's gonna be against. That's my reading of the committee. Can I, can I add one thing, Bert? Sure, go ahead, Mike. Uh, and, you know, I, I raise this for you and Frank because uh, this seems to be like one of those situations where the Office of Nightlife has that mediation, uh, you know, uh, process available, right? And if you want to rehabilitate your reputation here, I would get involved in the mediation process with your neighbors and the Office of Nightlife and yourselves. And uh, I've never seen anybody raise that here before. That's a good point. Have you heard anything about anyone using it, Christine? Yeah, it's a very good, I think it's a very good idea. Thank you, Mike. So yes, it's it's one of those, it's like uh, if you're in court, Frank, you know this, right? This is one of those things you do to rehabilitate yourself for your next hearing. And I think it's a perfect way for people to get used to doing it here. Right. Right. Thanks. Uh, Rob had his hand up too. Rob, did you have something to say? No, I, I, I'm just echoing what everyone else had just said. Thank you. Okay. And I, I have another, I'd like to hear though, between now and the next time that Isabella would come back, uh, if she's getting emails, which are not, which, which seems to be harassment, uh, I think she should be sending those emails to our office as they happen, you know, say, hey, the, so- the, the stories you told us are really uh, very upsetting. And I, I can imagine you would be really furious and, and upset. And I think if it happens again, you should be sending that to the office and say, look, look what's happening. Yeah. So that we have a track record over the next and maybe we can do something about it. I mean, we can help. I don't know what we can do, but maybe we can come up on something that we, to help you with that. Yeah, Christy, overall, but people don't generally do that and they should, you know, the business people should come to us just like residents. I know. People yeah. in the community should come to us just like anybody else and say, look, we need your help. Yeah, but in this case, I think I, think I really would like to extend our help to um, because the last thing we want to do is is hurt a you know woman you know non-white business I'm just you know diverse business exactly so we want to we want to help you on that and the mediation you process know. that uh, Mike suggested is available and that's an excellent excellent suggestion I, yeah. Mike so Isabella if you want to do that mediation you can. Contact Nellie at the board office and she can give you the information. But I guess the question for you is, do you want to uh, 
withdraw this application and perhaps make it again in you know a few months down the road or do you want us to vote on it tonight no i would like to redraw the application and um get um come back a few months down okay but my only my only concern is coming back a few months down is whenever people are still um, still doing what they're doing. Like Leticia spoke, she's the one who even informing in half of this that is going on. There's a lady that lived in her building that keep writing on the mailboxes of people to to claiming that it's a murder, creating a lot of false fabricated um, stories for people to be sending in emails and stuff. And she's the one who even informed me about half of this that is going on okay. you know okay. so it's uh i have to find another way to go around it okay. and to figure out what remember, to do isabella please remember what christine suggested that if you are being harassed and you're getting emails send yeah. those copies of the emails to our office yeah okay. i take, take pictures of what's happening and send it to our office i mean we really really don't want, we don't tolerate that in this neighborhood. I mean, we don't want to abate and tolerate that in this neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you guys, have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa. Okay, well, moving now to item number six. It's 803, 510 West 42nd Street. It's between 10th and 11th Avenue. Who is here? Wait, what, what about item five? What about um, item five? Yeah, item five, uh, 8, oh, 849th Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Scoozy. <laughs> 848 49th Avenue. I don't know why I jumped ahead. We're only on item five now. But we are in the new liquor, wine, beer, and cider license. Okay. <laughs> okay. 838 49th Avenue, revival, survival. Yes. Uh, hi, Donald Bernstein again. David, I see David, my client is on as well. Uh, I know it's getting late, so I'm gonna be kind of brief and then let David do a little bit of talking. So this is an application for a new license at 839th at 55th Street. It is a lounge that will cater to the LGBTQ community that uh, David will probably <clears throat> call verse. The space was occupied by Bar Bacon for about six or seven years. I think it was approved in August of 2013. Um, the hours that we're gonna have are 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. during the week, 4 a.m. Friday and Saturday, and we would like also 4 a.m. Sundays when Monday is a legal holiday, so a couple of days a year, Sunday as well, which by the way is different than Bar Bacon, which had 4 a.m. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We're not asking for a 4 a.m. license on Thursday, so our hours are a little bit uh, less than what Bar Bacon had. There will be uh, 24 tables and 54 seats, one bar with 26 seats. Uh, David will talk about, um, I think his, his little unique touch that he is going to have on this place. He's been a resident of Hell's Kitchen for a number of years. Uh, there are some aspects of the business that will be, uh, you know, a little typical, a little bit typical of what you see at other venues of this type in Hell's Kitchen. Um, there will be some performances such as singing and drag shows. We will agree that any live performance will end by 1 a.m. every night. So even though the hours will be 2 a.m., 4 a.m. and weekends, the performances will end by 1 a.m. Uh, we will have DJs on weekends. Um, during the week, David may have a DJ, but it would act more as an MC if there is uh, an event or a performance that requires an MC. Um, I do want to make a comment about the reference to dancing in the questionnaire because people may uh, think it's something different than it is. This is not a nightclub. There is no dance floor. There's no dancing that's being advertised or that's really part of the program other than possibly performers. But in terms of patron dancing, David really wanted to be transparent. The fact is that places that have music, there are people that get up and drink and, and they may shake around. Um, and there are places that say they have no dancing where that happens. So he's been trying to be transparent by saying that that may happen, but this is not a place that is encouraging or advertising or marketing dancing. There are windows that open. We will agree with your policy of closing it at 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. Uh, respectively. And uh, at any time that music is played, we will also keep those closed. 
Uh, it was a bar. There is soundproofing there. Notwithstanding that, David wanted to go out of his way and he hired Alan Firestein from Acoustalog. Alan has done his, his inspection. Uh, we have not had a chance to review all of his recommendations. We will get his final sound study. We will send it to you and we will work with him on implementing even additional soundproofing than is there already. Uh, David has done a lot of outreach. He's met with at least one person in the building. I think two floors above him is vacant. He's spent hours standing outside introducing himself to people. Uh, he's emailed the, the two block associations. We've emailed the block associations. He's put flyers up. He has also met with HK4953. I believe that you got a letter from Steve Belita today. They are in support of this application with some conditions that we have agreed to. We've also sent over the past week or so about a dozen letters and support from the community. And uh, even during a time where most applicants aren't soliciting petition signatures, David did put together about 35 to 40 petition signatures, which we also sent in. And those are the details. I think, um, let me turn it over to you, David. Thanks, Donald. And thank you everybody for uh, giving me an opportunity to introduce Verse. Um, as Donald said, I'm uh, a longtime resident of Hell's Kitchen, lived on 57th Street between 9th and 10th for about 10 years. I currently live on 43rd between 10th and 11th. Um, in the, during the day, I run a company called Give Lively. It's a nonprofit fundraising platform that we give away for free. Um, and it's deeply connected to community. One of the things that I wanted to do for my own community here in Hell's Kitchen was create a space that can be used for uh, giving an opportunity for talent uh, that has otherwise not had an opportunity to perform, to have that opportunity uh, to create some livelihood around a block that has otherwise gone dark. Um, the block between 54 and 55th Street, unfortunately, is pretty much empty on both sides, uh, both west and east. Um, so having a presence there would help create a little bit of safety because there'd be security during busy times of day and, and evening. Um, and I'm really excited to offer you know, a venue that has um, an advanced uh, elevated menu, uh, good food, good drink. Um, I wanna underscore that I'm taking you know, appropriate mitigation strategies for sound leakage um, and any sort of uh, otherwise control of, of the uh, space in the neighborhood. Um, I was once on a licensing committee in Boston on the Back Bay before I moved to New York 12 years ago. So I'm familiar with this side of it. I also lived above a bar for five years. I was on the first floor above a bar. So I'm also um, highly sensitive to the experience of living above a bar and what that means. Um, which is why I did so much of the outreach that I did do. Um, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you for your time. Yeah, I think one, one thing I'm sorry, Frank, I just forgot to mention is there is also a security company that David hired. Yeah. Uh, and I believe you have the security plan. Okay. Uh, what, what we don't have, Donald, is the petition. So if you could send that in, uh, at least I didn't see it. Well, I'm uh, pretty sure we sent them. I don't know if Nellie has them, but we sent them okay. in. We'll send them right. in again. David, oh, did you have any experience, you know, running, uh, owning, managing a, a bar or restaurant? Uh, so no, this is my first experience running this type of an establishment or business. Although I did grow up as kind of the kid hanging around a bar. My dad was a part-time bartender for 35 years. So I'm very familiar with all that goes on. Um, and my plan is to hire uh, a, you know, a, a person who's been in the industry um, who will, you know, expertly manage the bar as much as I would hire someone who expertly manages my company. Okay. So, um, Donald was correct that um, Steve Belita and the 59, well, 4953 Block Alliance uh, support this with conditions. Um, one of them, David, is that you keep the doors and windows closed whenever there's any kind of music or amplified sound inside. Yep. I, and I can't tell you how important that is with this location because Bar Bacon didn't do it. And it got so bad that um, this the, the board actually voted to re deny the, recommend denying them the sidewalk cafe they wanted because the open doors and windows were a huge nuisance to the neighborhood. So you've really got to do that. 
Um, and again, it's not just after 10 and 11. It's if there's music, it's amplified sound inside, the doors get closed. Or TV. Yeah, TV with sound, any of that. And um, sure. the other conditions were that um, they said you agreed there'd be no backyard use or sidewalk cafe. Yeah, there is no backyard. Okay. Um, and we're not coming to you today with a uh, sidewalk cafe request. And that there's no, um, that all queuing would take place inside an area that will be designated as such. Well, where's that going to be? The hope is that as much as I can hold a line inside the space, I would, for example, if there's a uh, particular performance, a, a podcast recording, for example, that, that folks can queue inside. Otherwise, I would use technology to help avoid queuing a line, having people um, on a list and they'll get text message when there's space. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So we got um, eight emails in support and a couple in opposition, but why don't we see if take questions and then see if there's anyone from the public and if not i'll summarize the emails Twee and rob um thanks um in picture 30 page 31 and 33 looks like an apartment lobby with mailboxes that's right and um i don't know what's posted there because it looks different from the public notice in terms of format just from far away uh that that's the notice to neighbors it's a copy of the email that was sent out to the community yeah, we prepared a uh, we prepared an email that uh, discussed this operation and the hours, and we posted that in buildings. Oh, okay, and that's what's on the following page. That's the notice to the neighbors. That's the email. Okay. Yes, correct. Um, and then um, going back to the front of it, the hours they actually said until two a. Oh, did I miss it? Four a.m. and then two a.m. Sunday, and then you say one a.m. Oh, okay. So that's kitchen and music. Okay. Um, then it says security guards only during peak hours on occasion. So with the security plan, how would that work? Uh, anytime there's a crowd or we believe there'll be a, a presence, um, you know, larger than uh, 70 people or so, we'll have a security guard. So I'd imagine that that would only be on Fridays and Saturdays. But if it's any other time of week, we would add one. So when you say on occasion, it's really during weekends. On occasion, it sounds like once in a blue moon. Yeah, that's a, a that doesn't that's not an accurate uh, statement. It it is consistently when it's busy, and we imagine that will be Fridays and Saturdays. So Frank, would we amend that to say Fridays and Saturdays? Of oh, this. Instead of saying on occasion? I mean, it's something we can consider. I, I, we usually just sort of attach the security plan and that there isn't a, this, his stipulation is only that he'll follow the security plan. Um, so we usually don't get into amending the security plan, but if people think it's important, we certainly could. It's not the security plan, it's the application page two of nine where he says on occasion. You know, Twee, that's a form that we use. That's not the application itself. That's, wait, wait, does he say on occasion? On page two of nine, it's page two of 33 of the... Yeah, page. I have two of nine. Which question? Well, well the, New York Nightlife Association, it's like four from the bottom. Yeah. The security guards only during peak okay. hours on occasion. Yeah, you want to cross that out and just change the, the wording, right? Oh, your a, answer. Dave, David, are you okay with saying on weekends, Friday and Saturday? Of course, yeah. I mean, I, I would even go as far as to say there are likely other days depending on the crowd size. But if it makes sense to just stipulate always on Fridays and Saturdays, that's I'm completely comfortable with that. Well, what do we? What What do you want to say? Um, if you're looking for a floor here, then let's say Fridays and Saturdays. But what, like Friday and Saturday nights, or? Um, after, yeah, evening hours, I don't know how specific you want me to get. Happy to say 8 p.m. and onward. Okay, so why don't we say security guards at minimum from 8 p.m. to closing on Fridays and Saturdays? That's right. I, I wouldn't want to hold you to a particular time in case, you know, the security guard a group that you're hiring says we're not going to 
we need to work a full a shift. Yeah. A shift yeah. and a shift begins at six or you know this is a minimum. These are minimum hours. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, Rob. Hey, sorry about that. Um the space that you're taking is bacon bar. You're not taking any of the space to the right or the left, correct? That's correct. And Frank, what were the previous hours of Bacon Bar? Do you have that on file? Yep, it, it was as Donald said. It was um, the same. Yeah, no, it was it was later on Thursdays. It was two a.m. Sunday to Wednesday, and four a.m. Uh, Thursday to Saturday. Now, those are the hours that they agreed with us and are on their license. We don't know if they were. I don't know if they were actually open that late. But they had the okay. Right got it. That, that's it for me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. Anyone else from the committee? Nellie, do we have anybody from the community? Yes, we have two people. Okay. I have, or th three people. First, I have Joshua. Hi, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, thank you all for taking my call. <clears throat> I, uh, I've been a resident in Hell's Kitchen for four years now, and I wanted to call and share with you guys that the last six months is the first time of living here that I have felt unsafe in my neighborhood. And I am calling to voice my support for Verse because we need to bring back our leisure activities. We need more businesses to come back into the neighborhood. And I think that's gonna really promote safety overall. <laughs> okay. Thank you, so Jack. Thank you very much. Next, I have Maria Ortiz. Maria? Hi, can you hear me? We can. I don't know how to turn my camera on, but. <laughs> uh, so Maria Ortiz here, I'm from CB4. I happen to live in the building parallel um, above the Chase Bank. So I was just curious, I'm trying to look through this thing really quickly, the, um, the application that CB4 has. Um, I, I just wanted to ask, was West 55th Street Tenants Association contacted? Yes. Since, okay. They were, and I think, Nellie, is, is the uh, president still on? Yes. Yeah, I think, did she, she, does she want to speak? Uh, yes, Christine has her hand raised. Okay, yes, so she's going to speak next, to Maria. Um, and just uh, is it okay if I raise my hand again if I come if I have another question? Of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so let's, right. let's hear from Fifth Fifty Fifth Street. Okay, thanks. Christine. Hi, it's Christine Gorman. I'm president of the West Fifty Fifth Street Block Association. Um, Obviously, uh, I'm very supportive of businesses in our neighborhood, um, but that doesn't mean that uh, I'm supportive of all businesses and that uh, we can use the pandemic or the decrease in quality of life as carte blanche for, for anyone. Um, I know that there was an email that was sent to the Block Association. You know, I also have a a full-time freelance career, so I can't always uh, check everything out uh, immediately. But um, I have received a number of emails from people, particularly those living in 360 West 55th, so directly above uh, where this establishment would be. And, and they are quite concerned um, because they know that once approval is given, they don't have as much leverage. And so, um, you know, our block association has meetings every Wednesday at four on Zoom. We have had for more than a year, a number of people have found their way to it. Um, and, uh, you know, we, I don't feel like there has been as much, you know, it takes a while for the public, not everyone is on email all the time to, um, to learn about these things. And so um, as a result, uh, the, the, block, the West 55th Street Block Association cannot at this time uh, support this application. 
David, would you be certainly willing to meet with the 55th Street Block Association? As Christine said, was it every Wednesday you have meetings? Yes, we have meetings every Wednesday. Um, the agenda for next Wednesdays is already taken, but we have other Wednesdays available. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, Christine, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm sorry that our emails uh, didn't didn't connect, but I'd be more me, than happy. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Bert. In this case, I, 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 we got sent the correspondence shortly before the meeting, and I think there was just a, you know, good faith lack of connection. Uh, the applicant did try to email Fifty uh, Fifth Street mm -hmm. in mid April, um, but again, uh, you know, Christine, I think, didn't focus on it until the past couple of days. So. Um, I think that's why the meeting didn't occur before this, because the applicant did meet with 5953 yes. uh, mm -hmm. So I think it'd be very good. He seems very um, amenable to meeting with you. He's met with other block associations, other groups. We would welcome that. And I think, uh, as I said, I've, I've, ha I've heard from a number of people who are concerned. So um, that would be, you know, as, as you know, we're not anti-business. We have worked with, with Ted Arenas, who's a very good uh, neighbor up at Rise Bar, just up the street. Um, but, uh, you know, this is the time to reach out and talk to people. Christine, do you, do you or your neighbors have particular, you know, sort of specific areas of concern that we might address with stipulations? Um, as I think well, you heard, they're, they're agreeing to keep the doors and windows closed. Right, that yeah. would be good to know. I, they, the, the major concerns I have heard are about noise, um, the number of people, particularly, we have a lot of elderly people who are still masking and you know at higher risk of COVID, so they don't wanna see you know, groups of young people who are unmasked you know, massing in front of the, the door. Um, and then there's there is concern about dancing and um, and dancing in the you know dancing spilling out. I mean I feel like I'm I'm a throwback to the Footloose movie, <laughs> but um, but I'm just I'm just reporting what the concerns are that have been um, uh, sent to me and uh, and that I have have dealt with. Okay, well well in terms of the. Uh... The queuing, um, what they're going to do is try to keep people inside and if not, use a sort of um, electronic notification system where they either take people's cell phone numbers and say, go away and we'll text you if we have space, or maybe you, some people actually use um, paging device, the beeper device. Yeah, no, I, I heard that earlier in the presentation. I think that, that we'll would be into would... the stipulations as well. Yeah. Um, David and Donald, um, in terms of the live performance, I, I, I appreciate the 1 a.m. limitation. Uh, it sounds like you're contemplating only very small size performances. Can we, can we put a limit on the number of people performing at one time, like, you know, three or four or something like that? I mean, again, just to give a little more reassurance to the community that this isn't turning into a, like a major entertainment venue. That's reasonable, yeah. I mean, the, the this is not. There's no intent of, of ever having. Uh, it's not a concert venue, so and it's not a. You know, as much as I adore uh, an orchestral performance, I don't think we'd have room for it. So, you know, having um, uh, having some having a limitation is fine. Um, frankly, the you know four, it's four, four or fewer four, work or four is fine. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thanks, Frank and Bert. I have a question. Go ahead, Sabrina. Can we make a boat with a stipulation of them meeting with their block association? Yes. Sure. We've yeah. Done, we've done that before. Yeah. With a number of applicants. Yeah, I wasn't. Upon the meeting with da 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 before the before full board. board. Right. The full board. Okay. All right, Dave, so you're okay putting that in as a stip too, right? Sure. Um, and why don't we say by the end of the end of May, since our full board is very early in June? That sounds good. 
right. Any other comments, community? I uh, still have hands raised. How many hands? Three. Three more. Okay. Flavio? Wait, I'd just like to say before we continue, it's now 826 and we have a full agenda and head. So I appreciate people making comments and expressing their concerns. I would like to say though, if you wanna say something that has already been said, just maybe just say, I agree with what has been said before and thank you. Okay, continue Nelly, I'm sorry. It's okay, Flavio. Uh, hi there, I thank you for the committee. I know it's late, so I, I won't stay too long, but I, I've been a resident for 10 years as well, much like the first committee member. Um, and it, it's, uh, and I would also like to echo Christine's comment around um, Rise Bar, for example, just uh, down on 9th Avenue being a good neighbor who has um, learned to grow in the community. And I've also been aware of the issues with Bar Bacon. So I am, uh, quite welcoming of a, a new holder for that location. Uh, I've known David for many years. And when David commits to something like electronic monitoring of the, of, of the, of the front door, I, I have full confidence that he will deliver on, on those promises. So I don't wanna to take too much more time from the committee, but I just wanna voice my full support here as someone who's lived close to places like hardware and close to good, and good neighbors and bad neighbors. And, and I'm, I'm, I think it's quite welcoming for, for the, new, the new management of that location. Thank you, Flavio. Next, I have Maria Ortiz. Maria. <laughs> Welcome back, Maria. <laughs> Christine, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> Just a quick, 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 easy question. I heard you guys say that Steve was in agreement with this um, uh, applicant uh, or application. I'm just curious, did he say why? Or if you guys said it already, you don't have to say it again. I can watch this on YouTube. Oh, I can, I can, I'll just summarize his email. He said, uh, David attended their April meeting. Um, there were no objections to his application, but there were concerns. David addressed these concerns regarding noise and live long queues. He's asking for a different venue than what the way Bar Bacon operated. There will be drag performances, singing, acoustical instruments. David agreed to closing all the doors and windows. Were there any performances or music playing? Agreed to no backyard or sidewalk use and told us all queuing would take place inside in an area that will be designated as such. As stated above, the community has no objections to this application so long as all the above concerns are stipulated. Okay, thank you. That's it, there's no one else. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now. I'd like to make a motion based upon the stipulations to move forward with this uh, yeah, application. Let, let, let me just summarize them. Um, so on page two, we're changing the question. To summarize the stipulations? Yeah. So on page two, we're changing the security guard uh, the text to say security guards at minimum from 8 p.m. to closing on Fridays and Saturdays. And then I have uh, five additional steps. Any live performances, including lip syncing, will end no later than 1 a.m. nightly. There'll be no use of any outdoor space. Applicant will minimize queuing on the sidewalk by queuing inside establishment and or using electronic notification systems for potential patrons. All live performances shall be limited to four performers or fewer. An applicant will meet with the West 55th Street Block Association prior to May 31. I think there is one more about complying. Did I miss that? Complying with the uh, implementing the sound report. Um, well, I guess no one's seen the sound report, right? Does. Yeah, I think we can say that we'll consult with our sound engineer and we'll take measures to uh, increase soundproofing. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's fine. What I heard. Okay. The only other thing I wanted to touch on, Frank, is I, I and I was not at the meeting with the Block Association, but I think that we agreed we would not be applying for a sidewalk cafe until unless we unless we come back in the future, we would have to. But if there's temporary DOT seating. You know, we would take advantage of that, which is going to phase out at some point. 
but yeah. there'd be no permanent outdoor seating un unless we come back if, if David ever wants that. Right. Okay, so why don't we say there'd be no use of any permanent outdoor space? Yeah. Okay. So there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Sabrina seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Abstaining? Present not eligible. Okay. Got that, Nellie? And then we, we yes. said that it was going to be a meeting with the uh, block association, right? That's the stipulations. Yeah, okay. That's that I read. Yeah. Before I'm sorry. the end of the month. Because our full board meeting is June 2nd. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate right. the time. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Now we go to number six, 510 West 42nd Street. Hi, good evening, everyone. Rosa Ruiz, representative of 42 West Group, Inc. Hi. Hi. So this is an application for a full on-premises liquor license. 650 person occupancy is the old Playboy location. Hours of operation are 4.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. Monday through Thursday, Sunday is 11 a.m. to 1 a.m., and then Fridays and Saturdays, 4.30 p.m. to 4 a.m. They're going to be operating as a full-service steakhouse restaurant with the event space downstairs, but upstairs is going to be restaurant space. Is your client here? Yes, he's here. He's on the phone. He's not feeling well. Good evening, guys. Hello, Everyone, hello. Hi. How many, did you say this is two floors or one, Rosa? It's two floors. It's, it's, it's one floor with a, with a private room in the, in the, on the second floor. You mean it up below? Excuse me? You're breaking up a little bit, Frank. Is the, pri is the private room, is the private room below the main floor or above it? Yeah, yeah the private room is below. Okay. Yeah. Um, Joseph, I, I I looked some at um, looked some at Jimmy's thirty eight, which I gather you also own. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, I, are you contemplating a similar method of operation here? No, J Jimmy's is um, Latin based, where this is a full blown uh, steakhouse, fine dining. Yeah, no, I guess I'm talking more about the sort of some of the you know, the bottle service, the, the, the brunch day parties that you advertise, um, you know, pre-ordering two bottles, um, it, you know, the bottomless brunches. Um, it starts to sound like a, 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 an operator that we had a lot of problems with in this district. So, yeah, the, the previous uh, tenant, correct? No, no, no. Okay. This is a different location. Um, oh, okay. But so, you know, so yeah, the 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 brunch that we would be doing on weekends um, would not consist of unlimited alcohol. Can Buddy, we stipulate you, to that? Uh, well, for, it's not. Um, it's not like a bottomless brunch. It's not. It'll be a la carte. It won't be yeah. unlimited. How about bottle service? Are you going to be doing that? Bottle service we will be doing in the event space in the back room. Okay. Um, to, um, to, to remind the committee, and I think some, a lot of the committee wasn't here, um, two operators ago, this space was a thing called XL <clears throat> Dance Bar, um, which was a huge nuisance um, from the moment they opened. And ultimately I think was either closed down by the police or the SLA because the criminal activity got completely out of hand. Um, as a result, when the, the next operator came before us, the Playboy Supper Club, this was at the end of 2016. Uh, we tried to work out some steps. We thought we had the operator then walked away from them at the last minute. So we ended up opposing it completely. 
and the SLA worked out a compromise. But the chief thing that came out of that discussion was that this space is just too big. And our, our chief required stipulation at that time was that the venue be limited to 450 people, including patrons and staff, uh, that there'd be no queuing at all outside, um, that there, we had requirements for security uh, when capacity was above 300 people. Um, and to actually have security in front of the two residential buildings because they were bearing the brunt of all the uh, misbehavior that was stemming <clears throat> from this place. So I'm not equating this operator with either the Playboy Club or the XL people. I'm just telling you the problems we've had with the space in the past, simply because it's a huge space in a neighborhood that's gotten even more residential you know, since it first opened. Right. Well, well, for for to be honest, what our, our main goal is is uh, is to really focus on the steak driven restaurant, and like you said, it is a big space. So we, we will be doing the nightlife on the weekends to generate extra revenue. Um, but our main focus is strictly steakhouse, and we want to be able to run the steakhouse seven days a week, and hopefully, the the night the nightlife. Is, is something that we're not going to depend on uh, because like you said, it is becoming more residential and we, we think we could really drive traffic there for, for dinners daily. Okay. How do you feel about reducing capacity? Uh, if I could reduce my rent, I would love to reduce the capacity. <laughs> okay. well, I because I can, I, I can tell you, you, you are not gonna be able to manage 650 people here in a way that is consistent with any kind of residential quality of life and, you know, those buildings <clears throat> right upstairs. I mean, you'd have uh, to have a massive security team to deal with that many people. Right, so well, we actually... Uh, yeah, so he, he has hired a security company already, which was part of the security plan that I had submitted earlier. It was called um, APB, um, what was that called again, American? Yeah, it's APB, it's American Protection Bureau. And so what he would be doing is having security guards, <clears throat> at least um, anywhere from 12 to 16 security guards, um, you know, if, you know, if the place does become crowded and he would place them in front of the residential buildings as well. But, but here's the thing, uh, like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, let me ask a, a clarification. The 650 sure. capacity, how much is on the main floor for the restaurant and how much is in the party space? Uh, the, the the restaurant and the main floor uh, is majority of the capacity. Only about fifty to sixty people are in the private room down below. So anybody of the six hundred, I mean, of the six hundred people, uh, those six hundred people would be coming for steaks. That's what you are saying. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, what I'm saying is not all 600 people will be eating steaks at once. You know, we do do we do do seatings where we do a four o'clock, a six o'clock, an eight o'clock, a ten o'clock. You know, so we, it's it's it'll it'll add up to that amount of people, but not all at once for dinner. You're saying it's not a walk-in restaurant. You make a reservation it, ahead of time, and you have is. seating. You have three seatings a night. And in each seating, your capacity is not 600. In each seating, your capacity is, what is it? No, well, if you're seating 200 people in the restaurant, and let's say we have an, a private event in the back room for, like, let's say for, let's say Chase, JP Morgan Chase, th there could be 300 people, a corporate mm -hmm. event in the back room. Well, I thought, so, the, the, I thought the party space was 50 space. No, that's that's down below. There's the restaurant is attached to the to the to the whole floor in the back as well. So the back now the is a party space. <clears throat> it, we will be using it for dining, but also it is definitely a, a party space. Correct. So now let's recap what we are saying. So <laughs> the dining in the front is how many people, and the party space in the back is how many people. Uh, it's 300 and 300, I believe. I'm sorry, yeah, 300, 300, something around there. It's even. Christine, if you look at the seating plan, which is attached, you can get a sense of it. Correct. Sort of like 
a more conventional restaurant in the front, and then the back has a big bar with seats around it and booths. It's more of an open space, correct? Yeah, it's, it's more open. So let me ask a question as part of the major issues we have had sure. here, as Frank says, for a queuing. Um, are, could you redesign the space so you have like a major reservoir and queuing all inside? Well, I'm sorry, what are you asking me? I'm asking you whether you can redesign the space inside so there is a major a queuing space. So there is never a queue for the 300 of which are going to be in the back. If people show up, we don't want to have a queue in front of the building. Again, all, all if we do have 300 people, they all wouldn't be coming at once. Yes, for the party, they would. Yeah, or on a Friday night at 11 o'clock when you're going right. to be at 600 capacity. You know, what happens if you get 700 people? You're gonna have 100 people waiting. Correct, where we have, we have the uh, barricades as well as the security team. No, and that is oh, what that has is, proved yeah. catastrophic. We don't want- They line them. up right in front of these residential entrances. Right. So what we don't want is to have a, a club atmosphere in front of the residents. And we don't want the barricade, we don't want the the, the red ropes, we, want, we don't want any of that. What okay. we want is you to take a portion of your space and make sure that your entire queue is inside your space. I understand. Can you do that? Uh, I, I think I could get creative with, with something, yes. Right, or or do what you heard the prior applicant is going to do, which is, you know, use some sort of electronic notification system so you get people's cell numbers or give them beepers and send them away. I understand. You could use in, instead of having people line up inside, you could give them, okay, you're number one, you're number two, go away, we'll text you when we're ready to have you come in or have a beeper system. Okay. Um, uh, can I ask you a couple other things? Again, this is just based on what you would do, what you do at Jimmy's 38. Um, you seem to have a uh, hookah smoking there. That's not gonna be happening here, right? No, we will not be doing hookah there. Okay, and you, you're not <clears throat> going to use any see you're using outside promoters on eventbrite you're not using any outside promoters here right um most of it will be to be done in-house we, we try to do everything in-house and bring a team in as far as the marketing aspect so we're, we're trying our best to do everything in-house so wait a minute are you saying you will have uh, uh outside promoters from time to time um, no. I believe, I think, believe we're going all in-house. Would you be amenable so answer, to stipulate so, that? So the answer is no. Excuse me? Would you, would you be okay with us stipulating that? Yeah. That, that, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Frank, do you have additional questions? Because I see Twee <clears throat> have their hands up. Um, not at the moment, so why don't you go on to other people? Okay, Rob and then Twee. Hey, um, just a little clarification. Um, you're working in conjunction with the hotel, correct? And you have got uh, some easement space uh, that you share with them? I do have that space, yes, but uh, the hotel is separate from us. Okay. Um, and you're not taking over the space of uh, 812, which is actually uh, a, a like a nightclub venue? You're not taking that over. Your space downstairs is a small little space, right? Correct. Okay. And uh, let's see. Um, nope, actually, that's it. I just saw the correction. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. No problem. So is, um, I'm looking at the map on page 17 of 53, um, and I see what Frank is saying. Is there two separate entrances? So the back space, it looks like there's a door 
Yeah, so there's, actually, there's there's plenty of um, there's a couple there's two entrances in the front, and there's many exits, obviously due to the the capacity um, to be up the co with the with the DOB. So that if you had, for example, in your scenario, JP Morgan using the backspace, they use that separate door. They're not waiting by the front restaurant to get in, in that door. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've spoken, well, no one has taken over the hotel yet, but I've spoken to the landlord where they would allow me to to use the, the uh, entrance to, to the hotel to go into the back room for a private event. Okay. And, so, and when so, you mentioned... Uh, my, my thing, yeah, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. So my main, my main thing, like I, I see what you guys are saying. Um, I, 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 I don't want to cause any type of ruckus for the neighborhood and, and definitely what's been going on in the past. Um, I don't want to have any issues. So um, you brought that to my attention. So I will, I am aware that the, um, the issue in the front is a concern and I will address it with my team and I will make sure when we have a private event or dining or nightlife that we're structured a certain way that's it's safe and, and, uh, and, and protective. Yeah, because that was my next question having to do with nightlife. How does this map get reconfigured? Do you clear out tables in a certain spot? Well, if the, restaurant, if, yeah, if the restaurant closes at a certain time, um, depending on the reservations, we would use uh, as many um, entrances to get people in uh, safely and in a timely fashion. But the tables stay or because or if you have dancing, how does that work? No, the, table, the tables in the restaurant are going to stay. The, the open space in the back is open. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, we, you're welcome. Any, any additional committee people? Questions, concerns? Rob, yeah. your hand is still Yeah, I, I, I want to add something real quick. Um, okay, um, on the application, it says inside, and it says a uh, number of seats at stand-up bars. And I, I, I agree, it says grounded 23, and is it minus six uh, below it? <clears throat> so the six seats are in the in the small room. Okay, okay. So I, I guess that's supposed to be lower. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's lower. I had the same problem. Okay, and uh, just looking at the map again. So the the, the back of the uh, I guess the event room they are calling it. Um, You've got different levels on the right and left side. Is that level being removed to where it's just one big open space? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, notice there are stairs in the back area. Um, is that being leveled to where it's all on the same field to where it's even? No, no everything is staying as existing. Okay. Um, so is your seating chart staying as you extend? Because just looking at your seating chart, I, I, I'm not seeing how you're coming up with like 300 people. In the back room? That's what you're looking at? No, I, I like I, I, if you add all of it together, uh, I mean, complete throughout, I, I, I don't know how you're getting the number 300. Throughout the I entire mean, event. You, you add up in the front, then you add up the tables, then you add up the seats, and then the additional seats over by the bar, and then you go to the first area, and then you go to the back area. I just, I am trying to figure out where you got that number, that's all. Rob, they are standing. They no, are but they're seated. They were supposed to oh, be. Oh, okay. They say right. there are 425 I, I, seats. Though, all I seated. See, Sorry about that. I don't see 425 okay. seats either. Okay. okay. Say that again, Frank. I missed that. Yeah, I don't see, but they say there are 425 seats, and I don't see 425 seats. No, no, that's for sure not. Okay, Inga? So, Rosa, we're going to need to straighten yeah. out the seating plan and the numbers. Yeah. yeah, yeah also, because the there bathroom is ratio. Mm -hmm. So, how many bathrooms are there again? Uh, there's two, one, two single. Three. No, there's more than that. Oh, uh, there's plenty more. Um, there's one, two, three, four, uh, four, five, six with about two urinals. And then if you go downstairs, uh, there's about six and six. So there's plenty. Is 
is that inside the hotel space or is that just within your space? No, that's only within my space. Okay, I, I'm only seeing the two ADA over by the bar. Oh, no, that, that, at, I'm sorry, that as well. I'm sorry, so there's actually more. If you, look at, the other, back, yeah, if you look at the other diagram that I have submitted, you'll see all the other bathrooms. Okay. Okay, thank you. Inga? Yeah, so the only thing I have to say is I just remember from previous applicants way back and the security guards at the other two entrances, that was the biggest problem that I recall and can foresee is just make sure you have security guards at those two entrances for the residents. Yeah, because it, it that was the biggest thing. Thank you. Okay. I would also like to to suggest along those lines that we ask uh, the applicant to meet with the owner of the building there before the full board, uh, because the owner of the building was intimately knowledgeable about all the problems they had, and they could raise other uh, issues or make other suggestions, which would be really helpful. Okay. Are you talking about the Clinton housing, housing building? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So it's an added stipulation. Yeah. Okay. What's is that? Is that 500 West 42nd? Is that the building? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, do we have anybody from the community? Yes, we have one person, Douglas Leland. Okay. Douglas. Bring Douglas on. There we go. Uh, nice to see you all again. I can't believe that uh, I was part of the uh, Tenants Association at Manhattan Plaza during XL and during um, uh, the Playboy. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm now not. I'm simply a resident. But I was the person sent by Manhattan Plaza for both these uh, different organizations. The, during Playboy, what they had decided was to line people up through the lobby to the back entrance of this very large space in back and feed them into that space through the, uh, a like a party room. Uh, play, it was a, a, a game room and then into the bar that is right by the street. That was the way uh, Playboy had finally tried to settle keeping people off the street. Uh, but please be aware also that the uh, street on that side, on the uh, south side of the street, is narrow. Also, the cop cars park at an angle. So there is not a lot of street walking room on that side. Um, also, part of the agreement, of the, as best I remember it, uh, what have been talked about security, was not only security on the south side of the street, but you've got apartment buildings on the other side of the street, and they have talked about also putting security on that side of the street. The travel in is going to be torn down, and that's going to become a new residence in the next couple of years. So there's another residential building being built on that block. Um, the front bar, I just want to remind people who have, may have been in there for either one of these, the doors open directly onto the street. And that was during Excel, particularly where people were stumbling out drunk onto the street, going out through those doors. You also have the police department on one side and you have several businesses to the east of, of that and apartment buildings even above the CVS on the corner. So um, it was disaster then I, I, as a resident, I don't, I love the idea of a steakhouse. I think that space in back would be a great space for roundabout theater. Uh, open cabaret back there. That would be a great way to use that space. But 600 people, I don't see how you can possibly monitor that, knowing the space out front, where things exit out of the bars, and how you're going to line people up to get into the back 
and then feed them through to the front. Uh, so I was with you for all of that. I'm, I can't believe I'm back here again, but uh, I wish you good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Douglas. Thank you. Thanks, Douglas. Um, that's it, Nelly. That's it. There's no one else. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion? Oh, wait, let me read the steps. Let's those two All right. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Sorry. Okay. And, and uh, uh, Rosa and Joe, if you make sure you agree with all this, there'll be no offering of bottomless alcohol consumption. There'll be no queuing on sidewalk. There'll be no ropes, obstructions, or barriers on sidewalk. There'll be no use of hookahs. There'll be no use of outside promoters, including Eventbrite. At all events, with capacity of over 300 people, security will be stationed in doorways of 500 West 42nd Street and 461 10th Avenue buildings during final two hours of the event. Those are the nearby residential buildings. An applicant will meet with the representative of 500 West 42nd Street prior to May 31, 21. No, the landlord, not the representing. Well, okay, I'm just thinking it, well, but that's yeah, what but I that's got the representative of the building mm -hmm. owner. Well, I'm concerned it's going to be the, 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 the super or the managing agent. That's not going to cut it. Okay, I'll say landlord, but you, you may have to help make that happen. Yeah, because the landlord doesn't always want to meet. That's why they have the management companies. Right. Okay, a representative then. You're, you're good. No, we'll stick with landlord. We'll stick with landlord. landlord and I'm, I'm representing the landlord. That's who's going to show up at the meeting. Yeah. So I'm still torn about this because... I just think structurally this space doesn't work at this capacity. So I'm not sure I'm gonna vote for it even with the stipulations, but you know, we've also heard the SLA say when you have spaces that are destined to be, you know, that you know, that are built this way and they've been used this way, you mm -hmm. know, try to find the best operator. So I'm not quite sure what to do. No, um, you know, and I and I understand that, Frank, but you know, he was just before your board in December with also a large capacity. Um, where it was approved by your board. Or which place? Um, which place? I'll tell you right now. Give me one second. Well, maybe he can tell us. Um, uh, the old um, Hudson Terrace space, guys. Oh, okay. That was you? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> All right. So that, that, that's going to be like an Italian restaurant, right? Excuse me? That's going to be the, the Italian restaurant, right? No, that's the rooftop on 46 with um, a Andrew Impagazzi. Okay. The so landlord? That's in the club, right. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Um, you folks should definitely come to the full board um, mm -hmm. beca because this location always gets a lot of discussion at the full board, unfortunately. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. And the motion is, Christine? To approve with this, those tips. Second. Is that a second. Inga, is that a second? All those in favor with those two? Those opposed? Nay. Two opposed? Abstaining? Present not eligible. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Have a good night. Okay. Number seven. 20 Hudson Yards, the Anna Bar and Eatery is the corporate entity. And we've lost our uh, Hudson Yards ambassador. Who is the uh, representative here, Nelly? Mike, Mike Kelly. Kelly. Usually it's Mike. Hi, Mike. We can't hear you for some reason. Okay, my volume's up. Can you now hear me now? You, we can yeah. hear you, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Michael Kelly representing the applicant. Anna Castellani, one of the owners, is present. Moshe Ziv is the other owner. It's a non premise liquor license application for Anna Bar and Eatery, doing business as these under the same name. Located at 20 Hudson Yards, Unit 207A on the second floor. 
The premise was formerly occupied by Citarelli. We're a full service restaurant selling, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Hours of operation are 8 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week. We have 77 tables, 206 seats, and a 24 seat bar for a total occupancy of 250. There's no outdoor seating, obviously. Background music only. I did send the CB questionnaire to Seven Blocks Associations. Julie, Julia Campanelli from the Hell's Kitchen Block Association was the only one who responded. After a few emails back and forth, her final words were, thank you, finally some gluten-free in Hell's Kitchen. Anna can talk about the menu and her 20 years, 21 years of experience in the industry. She also has ownership in four other restaurants with liquor licenses. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you, Mike. Any uh, comments, questions from the uh, committee? Anna, do you want to say anything? Uh, you know, I, I feel like, because I've been listening, obviously, through this whole meeting, we're, we're, we're pretty, uh, pretty basic here. So this is really an indoor, within Hudson Yards con you know, concept, taking over the Citarella space. We are primarily uh, catering to the office crowd. So we have a heavy lunch and a happy hour concept. Um, our chef is a celebrated chef from Israel, Eyal Shani, uh, very vegetable forward. Um, there is a bar, but you know, we're closing early. We're within the, we're within the mall. Um, it'll be fun. I think the menu is fresh and, and very contemporary. And I think the neighborhood's going to love it. Um, I, I'd be happy to answer any questions or concerns. I, I don't see any, so I'm, I'm here to answer them. Okay, thank you, Anna. Going once, twice, questions, concerns, expressions of? Okay, anybody from the committee? Nellie, anyone from the pump board? No, there's no one. i like to make a motion we move forward with this application. Second. Paul, anyone, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Present not eligible? Abstaining. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Welcome guys. Very much. Excited. Okay. Eight, 641 10th Avenue, Vala Table Corporation. This is between 44th and 45th Street. No, 45th and 46th. 45th and 46th. Hi, everyone. Oh, I had 44, 45. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is James Lamb, and I'm the business partner with the um, uh, 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 our friend uh, opened up this uh, Thai restaurant in uh, Hell's Kitchen, and I'm new in the Hell's Kitchen. And um, um, before, my, my partner actually owns this restaurant also. It's called the Bella Table. And uh, we currently have uh, the uh, BNY license. We decided um, to um, increase the business. So uh, he um, asked me to join this business in the pandemic time and I uh, um, helping him. And also we decided to set up a new collaboration uh, and also wants to try to get the uh, full legal license. Um, it's really because of the, um, our business is really, um, is getting uh, 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 diminishing and we want to see we could get the uh, full legal license to uh, boot the business. Um, I own the restaurant in Queens also. Uh, also, it's a Thai restaurant um, and also serving the uh, full legal license. Uh, so I had the experience almost like a seven years. Uh, our operation hours is uh, between uh, 11.30 to 10. Uh, we are not really looking for uh, any beyond that. Uh, we no loud music. Uh, we just want to have a little uh, cocktail added on our menu to helping us to boost our revenue. So this is our goal of our restaurant operations. Um, so um, we look forward to, uh, we just renewed the lease with the landlord, but the landlord is really um, subject to certain things. Uh, we need to uh, do it on our revenue side in order to helping us on the rent. So right now we are looking forward to see if we could uh, uh, build a business and also uh, stay on this neighborhood, you know, during this difficult time, you know. Okay. 
Uh, James, you didn't circle any music. You're gonna you're gonna have background music, right? Background music, correct? Only. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, Rob, you have your hand up. It was just addressed with background music. Thank you, Frank. Okay, Christine. I have a question at 10 o'clock. Uh, this is at what time do you plan to uh, stop serving? We probably will be a last call on uh, 9.30. Uh, so most likely uh, 30 minutes, we will winding up, you know, the kitchen cleaning and everything, you know. I, I just, you may want to have a little more space after that. That seems very, uh, yeah. so you may want to do 10.30 or 11 so that yeah. you have the time to close properly. I suggest yeah. 11. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the things, the reason why we're looking for a short hour during this time is um, we want to avoid uh, some kind of the overtime payment to our worker uh, for the cost perspective. Yeah. So that's why we are trying to, you know, limit the time. But if the revenue goes up, yeah. yes, well, you don't, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you don't have to stay open until 11, but this would at least let you sure. uh, stay open until 11. Because 11 means when all the customers have to be gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it'd be safer for you to have 11. Thank you, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I'll make that change. Uh, any additional comments? Storm door. Rob? No, they don't have that. Okay, I, I was just gonna ask Christine's question. That's all. No, no, I think I checked it out. Yeah. You, <laughs> You were going to channel Christine. Okay. Um, anybody from the community, <laughs> really? No. I guess not. Motion. There's no one from the community. Sorry. Okay. And there's a second. Okay. All in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Thank you, James. Good luck. Thank you. Aye. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank Have a good evening. You. Thank you. Good luck, James. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Number nine, Sushi Babu at 23rd Street. The address okay. is 232 7th Avenue, which is 23rd to 24th Street. And the applicant Max. is Max, is the lawyer? Yeah. Yeah. Max. I, I am the lawyer, but uh, they're handling this one without me. Daniel Zelkowitz should be here um, and presenting. Oh, sorry, you, your, na your name was on the phone, on the form. Um, Did you know that? Is, is, <laughs> well, I mean, we're representing them. We, we put the packet together, but uh, we're just not presenting ah. tonight. Okay, is, is he here? Yes, yeah. hello, I'm here. I see him down there. There is Daniel. Okay, ah. there he is. Hi. Hi. So go ahead, Daniel. So uh, we, uh, we operate a small omakase only sushi restaurants, um, very limited capacities. We only seat uh, at the sushi bar up to 12 people at a time. Um, and that turns every 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, we'll have a small cocktail bar, uh, 95 to 95 plus percent of our customers are reservation based. Um, so they're coming at a specific time for a specific time. Um, very little walk-up business, so there sometimes is. Um, you know, typically, you know, our, our operation normally will close before the hour is even listed, though we do like to have that wiggle room just in case. Um, we're, we're asking for midnight during the weekdays, 1 a.m. Uh, weeknights. Um, weekends, my apologies. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, a really... Beautiful upscale um, sushi omakase bar focusing on really high quality ingredients. And we think it'll be a really positive force in the neighborhood. And what side of the street are you yeah, on? Daniel. Before? I'm sorry, what was that? What side of the street are you on? What was in the space before you? Uh, I'm not sure what was we're on the west side. Yeah, we're on the west side. I'm not sure what was there previously. We're, uh, we're, we're uh, you know, connected. Buffalo to the uh, hotel that's there. Yeah, the form says Ikeban Sushi hmm. was there before. 
So, Daniel, the it question I have. past asked, the place, it says Buffalo. Hold on, Rob. Says what, Rob? It just saying, when you walk past the place, it, it, it says uh, Fafala. But, I mean, that, that was an old tenant. I don't think that it worked out. Now, they never opened because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Um, Daniel, my, my question has to do with page six, the, the sidewalk cafe. Yeah. Um, I, are you, is this talking about a permanent sidewalk cafe? Uh, so I know that if we do go ahead and do a permanent sidewalk cafe, we'll, we will be coming back to the board for a full up for an application. Yeah, because we don't really know what the rules are going to be. Absolutely. For. So yeah. can we say, can we cross out that page and say this doesn't, this current application doesn't extend to a sidewalk cafe? Yeah, absolutely. I think that if we do see that we're going to have any kind of permanent sidewalk cafe, we would be very happy to come back to the board and, and present. Yeah. And this doesn't affect your ability to do open restaurants or anything. Any of that. This is Correct. just talking. This isn't it. This, okay. Yeah, because currently there are no sidewalk cafes that all that procedure does not exist anymore. Right. Uh, suspended. Tweet? This one is literally right around the corner for me. So uh, I was really surprised to see this on here. And I'm two things. One, I don't understand why it does say itchy bond because this is new construction. And I think Rob is saying falafel in a way that sounds like falafel, so, but yes, I understand what you're saying about that. So why does it say Ichiban was there before that? Is this new construction? Um, I believe that they may have been, I think that what it may have been was that the space was a larger space previously and it may have been divided. So that could have been what it is. There was never any, any retail there before. I mean, it's, it. it's, it's completely empty. So I think that's just an error. Okay. The other the other question for you is the name because on one part it says sushi by boo, but on the end of the pages it's sushi by bay b a e. Which one is it? Yeah, so it's gonna it initially when we uh, when we first started this process over a year ago before the pandemic, it was initially going to be a sushi by bay, uh, which is a concept we have that features um, you know female sushi chefs. Um, at this point, uh, just because of all the changes that have occurred within the pandemic, it'll be Sushi by Boo, which is a concept we have several locations of throughout New York. Okay. Sweet. Where does, it, where does it say Bay? So I can... I believe by the menu, it says Bay. Oh, but not on the skip form itself. No. Oh, no. Yeah, it's page 17 of 20, where it says Hamachi, Akami, Chutoro, like they list, and they have a nice Bay Cafe. Yeah, that, that aspect is not there anymore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's the same team. It's the same operation. Uh, it's just a very slightly different um, name, but the concept is you know almost identical to what we were previously looking at. Okay. Any additional comments, questions from the committee? No, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I, I just want to say we got one community member in op in opposition. Uh, saying um, I managed 226 and 228 7th Avenue and the block in the neighborhood already have enough liquor to provide a steady stream of loud drunk revelers in the evening and night. The building itself, 732 7th, has not been a nice addition to the neighborhood. They regularly have trash piles on the sidewalk all day long and they're lax in cleaning the sidewalk. The doorman is not around the clock. Okay, that's the only letter in opposition. Yeah, yeah, our, our, our uh, you know, the kind of patron that we have typically isn't, you know, a heavy drinking crowd. We serve uh, beer, wine, and sake. Mostly, it's sake, uh, the cocktails as well. But uh, because of the timed experience, you know, people aren't typically spending three or four hours there drinking so heavily. It's, it's more of a one or two drink kind of location for the most part. Nelly, any, anyone from the community, Nelly? No, there's no one. Okay. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Rob, you're into motions tonight, huh? Okay, the second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. President not eligible, abstaining. Okay. Good luck, Daniel. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Okay. Number 10, 431 West 16th Street. That's between 9th and 10th. This is the Gatsby Mansion, New York. That one is me. 
The way um, I understand it, this is going to be sort of an immersive theater, Max? It is. I just want to make sure all my people are, are have been properly promoted. So um, Simone Jeanette is, um, has just raised her hand as an attendee. Um, Jessica Jenin and Phil Dorn, they could be brought on. That would be great. Thank you, Nelly. All right, very good. Um, so good evening. Uh, I think there are no new committee members here, so you all know me. My name is Max Bookman. I'm an attorney. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Phil Dorn. He's a new associate at our firm. Um, he's been a, going to be assisting me at community board meetings, and uh, perhaps if you're all lucky enough, you'll be seeing him uh, without me at some community board meetings at some no. point in the future. So. Um, <laughs> So go easy on, on us tonight so he knows how, how easy it is going to community board meetings. Um, uh, I'm going to introduce everybody else in a, in a minute. What's that, Christine? Nothing, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, I'll introduce everybody else in a minute, but I just want to introduce the concept first. So this is uh, Gatsby Mansion. Uh, the space is the old Highline Ballroom on 16th Street between 9th and 10th, uh, as Bert said. Um, so we're talking about across the street from uh, the backside of Chelsea Market on top of the, uh, the Western Beef. It's that three-story building where Western Beef is the ground floor. The Highline Ballroom was the second and third floor. And so that's the space that um, we're going to be taking over. That space has been vacant uh, since the Highline Ballroom closed, which was before, the, certain, I think a few months before the pandemic, actually. Um, and uh, I'm sure everybody's familiar with that venue, but to the extent that people aren't, that was a concert and event venue that um, had the ability to and did in fact um, operate uh, events, um, uh, concerts uh, and shows and nightclub things until uh, 4 a.m. Um, so our plan is to bring a theatrical production to this space. Um, it's going to comprise of three ticketed events uh, the main event is called Immersive Great Gatsby. Um, so this is an immersive theatrical production of the famous F. F. Scott Fitzgerald uh, novel. It uh, has been playing in the United Kingdom for the past five years. Uh, it's gotten great reviews. Uh, that production is now coming uh, to the United States, to this location. It's also played in many locations around the world. Um, it's an immersive production, so immersive theater, think of uh, Sleep No More is probably the, the best analog in, in, in your community. Um, we actually have someone from Sleep No More who's going to be part of our production team. Um, the real main difference between Sleep No More and Gatsby is that Sleep No More, for anyone who's been to it, is more of a choose your own adventure adventure style um, where you, you, know, you sort of go to different places and you're not really guided. Uh, Gatsby is a much more linear um, event. So even though you're not sitting in seats, it's immersive. There's seven different rooms and you could go to different rooms. Um, it is a, you are guided you know, in a linear fashion um, so that a, a linear story plays out um, before you. Uh, so it's an exciting, interesting um, program. Um, there are two other ticketed events, as I mentioned. There's a before the show and there is an after the show event. So the before the show is a uh, pre-show dinner. So you could buy a ticket for that as well. Um, it's a seated dinner. Uh, we have floor plans showing what the seated dinner looks like. Um, uh, it's um, it's going to have actors play, uh, who are playing F. Scott Fitzgerald and, uh, and Zelda Fitzgerald who are hosting the dinner. Um, and it's a, it's a full, you know, full dinner, full service dinner. Um, the other event is the after uh, show event, and that's going to be a, a live uh, jazz music 1920s uh, style um, event, uh, which you could buy a ticket for for, for after the show. Um, so Mark and Simone are the producers of, uh, of the show. They are known figures uh, in the industry, uh, both in Broadway uh, and uh, over um, in London's West End, uh, their productions have earned over 50 Tony Awards, uh, international awards, London and Paris, Australia. Uh, they've been involved in Hairspray, Producers, American in Paris. Um, and part of their team uh, are uh, Lewis Hartshorn and Brian Hook, who are leaders in immersive theater. So um, they're operators of uh, a venue called Immersive London, which is in London, which is a world-class immersive theater. Uh, their productions have been nominated for four Olivier Awards, which are the London equivalent of Tony's, um, as well as a Grammy. Um, in addition, Mark 
um, Sal, uh, Mark Routh um, is uh, licensed. He has a liquor license. He's one of the owners of 54 Below, uh, which is a supper club and performance space over on uh, 54th Street and Broadway. Um, so those are the players. Uh, just uh, one before I stop talking and take questions, I just want to tell you a little bit about our outreach efforts. Um, those are documented in our packet. Um, we reached out to, to several different individuals and groups. So we, ha we heard back from the 15th Street Block Association who welcomed us, thought this was a great use for the Highline Ballroom space. Um, we spoke with folks like Diane Nichols and Melissa Stern who had questions. I don't know if they're here tonight, um, but we did answer uh, uh, their questions, which we think were to their satisfaction. Um, no promoters, uh, no outdoor space, no windows, no DJs. Uh, closing 1.30 on weeknights, th uh, 3 o'clock on weekends, and 1 o'clock on Mondays. Uh, so I think that's a pretty comprehensive overview. We're all here and happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Uh, question, your uh, after-hour show, how long uh, will that run for? Uh, Different lengths, depending on whether it's a night, a weeknight or weekend. Uh, Mark, will you uh, answer the, the length question? Sure. Um, basically, um, what we have is the, 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 the main show, the, you know, the Immersive Great Gatsby show, that show is roughly two and a half hours. Um, there's then a half an hour sort of transition period. And then, you know, then we have the after hours part. So the Friday and Saturday nights, which have the later um, time period will have, you know, a, the longer, um, the longer uh, opening period, basically. But, um, but what what that experience is, it's a ticketed event, and we'll have, um, you know, live music and dancing, but it's not like a nightclub atmosphere. It's it is very much in this in the theme of the Great Gatsby era, the jazz, you know, jazz era, and it is, uh, you are you are basically, you know, celebrating with you know, Gatsby after, after the, the, the main show. So in terms of the time period, it, it varies. It's, it's, it, it would be up to closing time, you know, and, and there'll be different, um, you know, like the, in, in the long, when we have longer, we'll have more singers. Um, there's a piano, so there'll be live singing, but it's not, um, you know, again, it's not like a rock venue or anything like that. I, I, I very much love the concept. Um, uh, okay, so basically for the after uh, the after the dinner show and the after the show, um, there will be um, jazz music on the second and third floor. And if you so want, you're encouraged go ahead dance. But it, it, as you said, it's not a nightclub. It, this is all about jazz and the Great Gatsby and that whole area and sort of kind of people get a chance to immerse themselves in that theme and sort of kind of relive it. Um, yeah. the same show, uh, the, the same entertainers for the second and third floor, uh, will the music be piped down from one floor to the other, or will it just be the same idea going on between the two floors? It's, it's really the same thing. The space is not, I mean, the second and third floor, the, the third floor is really a mezzanine and it's only, it sort of wraps around in an L shape around the main floor. So it's really one space, um, during the show, in the upstairs that becomes Gatsby's boardroom, which is a specific set, you know? And, and so the doors, which are sort of French doors, they close. And then during the after hours part, those doors open. So the whole space is, you know, is, it becomes basically one space. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Christine, and, uh, Sweetie, and then Mike. Yes, and, that, yeah. sounds ex uh, that sounds exciting. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to clarify a little bit the form where we're talking about the capacity, page two of nine, uh, Max. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it says inside the occupancy is 660, but then it says this maximum number of people will be 660, but then the number of table is 29 and seats 146. So what is the typical, uh, the typical um, size of the attendance? So those... Uh, so those table numbers uh, and, and chair and seat numbers, Christine, uh, refer to what the primary uh, seated event, which is the the pre-show dinner. Right. Um, so that so that so we're going to have 29 tables, 146 seats for for the pre-show dinner. Those tables get taken away for the actual show. The show itself is primarily standing, although there there are some 
uh, places uh, in the set for people to sit if they want to. Um, so the, the 660 number is the occupancy that's on the current certificate of occupancy. So that's the theoretical maximum for um, the, the show itself. In terms but of you number. wouldn't expect any shows to go, the attendance to any shows or to any of the evening to be more than 200 or something like that? Well, I can let Mark speak to that but i do i we, we do think that we it, it, we certainly will have uh, a higher uh, be able to sell more tickets for the main show itself than we will for the seated dinner so you don't the seated dinner which is the 146 mm -hmm. maximum um that's not the cap on what the show will be there uh, there certainly could be could be more right. for people who don't want to buy the ticket for the seated yeah dinner. the show the show the show will have a maximum capacity of around 450 we think that's the absolute maximum that would have there would be um there are uh, you know a few tables on the main floor that remain the the tables in the boardroom remain but the rest of the space is cleared out so uh, i think we provided two different ground plans, one which shows the, you know, the, the pre-show dinner basically set up and one that shows the, um, you know, the post-show. And also there are these multiple rooms, as, as Max explained, there are seven rooms. So people can be, you know, the, 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 the patrons actually go into those rooms. So like Daisy's bedroom is a room and there will be people, you know, in that room, meaning patrons, you know, so they get sort of spread out over the whole space. So the, 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 the question leads to how are you going to manage, what, what is the way of managing the lines or the queues either for first for the, the dinner and then for the event? Is, where are the people being lined up? So uh, Christine, they hired a uh, security uh, management company that uh, deals with Broadway uh, productions. Um, so like any Broadway uh, show or any theatrical production, there will be a brief period where when people arrive for the show where they will be queuing on the street. There will be security there similar to Sleep No More or any other Broadway show for that matter, ensuring that the line is uh, kept up uh, against side so that uh, it's not interfering with pedestrian traffic um, but unlike you know some of the other um, you know applications you've heard tonight this is not a uh, you know it is it, these are ticketed events and so this is not an ongoing line scenario all night long it'll just be you know when there is a, a show time you know probably 30 minutes before the show starts people will start showing up they'll form a line we'll have security to make sure they're in place and the people will get in um, and on the back side of that, since we do, you know, unlike a traditional Broadway show where when the show is over, everyone is just out on the street all at once, um, since there is this option to do the after show, which some people will take and some people won't, it staggers uh, the, the dispersal of, of people, the egress of people on their way out. You're not going to have everybody out all on the street all. And there's, and, and as Max said, there's three separate ticketed events and you can choose one, two, or all three, you know, depending upon what, what you want for the evening. And of course there's a discount if you choose more than one, but the idea that will stagger the, both the ingress and the egress so that we won't have, you know, everybody, you know, coming or going at the same time. Okay. So, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So um, for the maps, I am looking at them, page 13 of 29 and page 14 of 29. Um, and so one of them is where it's cleared out. That's the first one for the show, which is smaller and harder to read. And the second one has got these like the dark tables. That's where the, uh, the dark look like flowers. That's where the tables would be for pre-show. Yes, hi Tuiya, we, we could have labeled those better for you, but so you're exactly right. The page 14 of 29 on the PDF, that is the layout for the pre-show dinner. So those dark things you see are tables, the little flower petals are seats. So you see for the second floor, those are all six tops. For the third floor, those are all four tops. Um, and then those get cleared out for the main show, which is uh, on, um, yeah. on yeah. 13. Yeah, th hi, thanks Max. But on the um they get brought back for the jazz for people who want to sit down too? Uh, Mark, I think could correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, not all of those will. There may be some that get brought back so that some people have a chance to sit, but it, they, they will not all get brought back for the jazz. 
Right. I think I, our intention is not to bring them back. Uh, we're we're intending that the pre-show dinner has all the tables, the post, but both the show and post keep the tables that are there, you know, during the show, basically. So once once those once the tables go away, they stay away for the rest of the evening. Oh, OK. And then with regard to sound, page four of nine says they'll employ a sound designer who will address the issues of potential noise to services. Could you explain that a little bit? Does that mean there would be a re the report? Well, we, so we don't have a sound uh, study. I mean, this was previously a performance space with existing um, soundproofing in it, which was put pursuant to a stipulation with your community board dating back to 2006. Um, Mark, uh, do you have anything to add about um, about sound design? And uh, uh, I mean, we'll we'll have a um, you know a um, theatrical sound designer who will be um, concerned about the issues of any kind of spill. The one good thing about this location, though, is that it is you know above a supermarket, next to a commercial non-residential building. Um, the back of it is an open space that is uh, basically there's a, a setback of, you know, a, a building that's quite a bit behind it. And Mark, and, if I could just jump, if I could just jump in, Mark, right. you know, and, and no windows. And so that's why we didn't right. really do a sound study for, for this. It's just, um, for, you know, from the feedback that we got from our outreach uh, and just from the design of the space with no windows and its previous use, we think that the sound issues um, are, are not uh, significant. I mean, it just, it just, I mean, it seems misleading that it says we will do it and we will address. So it just sounded, I mean, are you saying it won't have, but have to happen anymore because it used to be a theater space and the community seems okay with it and the location? That's what's not clear then. Well, so, all right, so if I could just clarify it. So the question that you're referring to asks, you know, have we obtained an acoustical report from a certified sound engineer? So the answer to that question is no, no, we haven't. But as an assurance, as, a, as an element of uh, putting on a show like this, there is a sound designer. And part of what he or she does is in, in her overall job is to ensure that there is no uh, noise leakage. So we don't have a report for you today, but uh, you know, the point is to rest assured that that is part of our uh, design. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Inga? Thank yeah, you, I just, oh, oh, Mike, your hand went down, so I didn't it see it up. Did. Go ahead, Mike, go ahead. Okay, now, I don't usually pipe up this late stage, but I was just curious about something. You know, this sounds like such a fun event. Are the patrons so immersed that they actually show up wearing, uh, they do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So, People who are not familiar with the thing would show up in their regular clothes and be like, oh my God, I don't belong here. Is that the? No, not at all. I mean, I, I, I certainly <laughs> didn't dress up when I went. I've gone a couple of times and I wore my normal clothes, but uh, just just know, Mike, that we'll have for you, you know, a headband if you want to purchase one on your way in or, you know, no, no, some my, uh, some my, suspenders or a hat. We can we can make you feel at home, even if you no, no, haven't the brought it in clothes advance. That I wear, no, Mark, the clothes that I wear that I have actually are period clothes. That's all Excellent. I know. <laughs> then then, then so you're going to feel right at home. You're going to feel right at home. Thanks. OK, sure. thanks, Mike. Inga? Okay, so ha just one question. I, I have no problem with the sound because I know what it was before, but how many people are going to be able to stay for the after show? What's the capacity? Um, it's, you know, the, the same rough capacity. I mean, in that, you know, 450, you 450. Know, range. So yeah. when you talk about jazz, people think about modern jazz, which is very mild in a sense around World War II. And the jazz during the war Roaring Twenties was quite, <laughs> that's why they called it the Roaring Twenties. So it will be lively. People will stay till the end. At least I would for that kind of jazz. So <laughs> well. you will have a lot of people leaving all at once at the end and staying for that after show. I think okay, you're well, writing good. It's a different type of jazz. Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. The only point I would make, and if Mark wants to say something after, but that's no fine. problem because the other place was loud and didn't spill out. Well, so. exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, whatever happens here is, I think, you know, from a quality of life perspective, better than you know what uh, was the previous operation was. Um, mm -hmm. And there will be some number of people who 
for whatever reasons, you know, because they got to get home early, they're, they're tired, they have work the next day, whatever, they're just not going to buy that ticket for the, the, the other event. So it won't, I don't think, although it's theoretically possible, I don't think it's likely that every single person, if we have a fully booked show is going to stay for the after event but, but you're right is, this is not a, is a this is not a quiet is not a quiet boisterous jazz. jazz from the roaring 20s you're right so. uh, Absolutely. i hope so <laughs> i hope so okay uh any additional questions from committee members uh nelly do we have anybody from the community no there's no one okay. i'd like to make a motion <laughs> i'm so surprised rob <laughs> Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed. Aye. Opposed. President not eligible. Abstaining. Okay. Thank I you. Have, I have a comment about it. Just a comment, a note after that. The 16th Street is very close to the Fulton houses. And it would be really great if you could hold like a, a, a job fair at the Fulton houses where there is a lot of young people that need jobs so that's that's a great idea we would we would love to do that that's a great idea because we are going to need like ushers and you yeah, know exactly. some people like that that might that might be great and obviously if they're right there then they'll be right there right <laughs> so, right and you could have something on the you, you know and from time to time have an event where they can come and they don't have to pay or whatever yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah yeah um so if you can i don't know get in touch with 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 us there is a tenant association at Fulton well and i think aren't there's isn't there some some i think some people on the board uh don't they live in fulton houses yes um, yeah yeah well, have, i'll i'll get in touch um right, af right. afterwards and see what i think that would connection. be a great a great opportunity yeah. thank we you we would love to do that yeah great. thank you christine Thanks. it's a good idea all right Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you, Rob. I've been doing this for six years now. This is my first Rob Walker motion to approve. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I feel accomplished tonight. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Welcome in our part of the woods. <laughs> Thanks. We're excited. Thank you. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Been looking Thank forward you. to the Roaring Twenties. Good night. Yes. Okay, bye. Good night. Take care. Number 12 bye -bye. is... Um, 383 West 33rd Street. It's another applicant for the Moynihan um, train hall. It's a food hall bar. And Joseph, are you the? I'm the attorney, and I've got uh, Danny McDonald and Paul Lamas here, the applicants. I see Paul on camera. Hello. I see Danny, and there's Paul. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome, Paul. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you. Who's doing the presentation? I can start. Uh, the application before you is a uh, an on-premise liquor license, Moynihan Food Hall Bar LLC and PDP Hospitality. Um, this is the food hall portion of Moynihan Train Hall. So if you look in the diagram, it'll, I think it'll make sense within the actual Moynihan train hall itself, there is a food hall area. Um, as you guys have seen with other applications with these food hall concepts, um, the liquor authority allows multiple stalls in a food hall to subscribe to a shared seating model. Uh, one thing that's changed in the last year or so is that they are now letting one full liquor license applicant be part of this food hall with a bunch of other beer and wine applicants. Mm -hmm. So as you'll see in the diagram, there's about 11 different food stalls that are gonna uh, subscribe to this shared seating, communal seating area in the middle. Um, you will hear, I believe there's three to six of those vendors will want to pursue their own beer and wine licenses. So this board will hear those as they come, um, but those aren't, <laughs> we discussed today. Today, the application is for the primary uh, central bar and restaurant within uh, the food hall space. So in the particulars of the application, you'll see that it is a rather large space. There is a capacity of 900 people, but please don't let that number scare you. That's the total capacity for the, the whole area, again, within the train station itself. Um, and the 433 total seats, that's the whole communal seating area. 
that all of the people who shop at each one of these uh, individual food vendors will utilize as well as this applicant. Uh, this applicant, uh, you guys may know they, I mean, between the two of you guys, what do we have? 25, 30 liquor licenses in New York, 40, 50 years of experience operating hospitality ventures in New York City. Um, these are the guys behind Le District, Harry's Steakhouse, Harry's Italian, Pier A, Dead Rabbit. Uh, this was the operating group that was brought in to fix the Penzi by Penn Station when it wasn't working the way it was supposed to. And they were able to be successful there, which is one of the reasons they were tapped to come in here and operate this space. So these are operators that have experience operating large facilities, doing it well, um, and particularly operating a food hall style space in a train station, which not many people can say that they've done before uh, across the street at the old Penzi location. Uh, you'll see the hours of operation there uh, from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. We fully appreciate that we can't serve alcohol those full times, but the idea is there will be food available, the space will be available to commuters, things like that in the off hours when alcohol cannot be sold. Um, the predominant method of operation from a music standpoint will be recorded background music here. However, we've checked live and DJ as well because we do anticipate that from time to time there may be an event whereby there may be a DJ or some sort of live music for you know, a private area where they will sort of rope off a portion of this food hall, although there will always be some stalls open to the, pub to the public to serve the commuters. Uh, we reached out to every single block and neighborhood association whose information was provided to us from the board. And the only comments that we got back, and Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, were there was some concern that this might spill out onto the street. There might be an outdoor seating component, things like that. That's absolutely not the case here. This is totally contained within the Moynihan train station. So I can, I can let Paul and Danny talk a little bit about the concept if you'd like, and then we're here for any questions that you might have. Thank you. Yeah, given the hour, why don't we see if we have questions first? Yeah, yeah. sorry, I, I cut it short. I tried to be as expeditious as possible because we have been here a while. Appreciate Question your time as always. Question the committee, Christine. So, I see on the general uh, on the general map, you are closer to Thirty First Street. Is that what I'm seeing, or Thirty Third? Thirty Third. Closer to Thirty Third. Yeah. Oh, okay. To the north side of it. Yeah. All right. And then, where are your deliveries coming from? I mean, what I mean is that where are they delivered from? Uh, the streets what what is the delivery path i believe that is the 31st street uh, middle of the block 31st they come from 31st street okay mm -hmm. all right there's a specific truck uh, bay there that deliveries yeah, yeah. now i, I remember that's yes. why I, I couldn't make sense of it now mm -hmm. i right okay yep. any additional questions People from the community, Nelly? There's no one with the raised hand. No one with the raised hand. Motion. Second. No second? Yes, there was a second. I didn't hear oh, one or. Second. Thank you, Carrie. Um, Sabrina, everybody. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, present not eligible, abstaining. Thanks guys for waiting around. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. For, Look forward to for seeing the you there. Thank you. Okay. As always, appreciate your time. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And last on our agenda, number oh. 15, Penn Columbus. Columbus Circle. Hi, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, Hopefully you can hear yeah. me okay. Now I need a drink. <laughs> Um, this is Lindsay from Team Law Firm representing Restaurant Associates. They are seeking a catering establishment license for use at the Deutsche Bank 10 Columbus Circle on the 9th and 10th levels. 
um, Restaurant Associates was before you last month as well, seeing um, a very similar license for the Google corporate offices. They also are known for providing food and beverage service at the Tiffany Blue Box Cafe. So this is an internal operation for the Deutsche Bank uh, employees. That's correct. We, yeah. Okay. Lindsay, you are off. You can't hear Hello, me. can you hear me? Huh? Where are you? Lindsay? Keep muting yourself. Yeah, you're still she's, muted. I'm sorry, she's reconnecting. Uh, okay. Frank, you did a site visit? Yeah, I did a site visit with uh, a couple other people. Um, you know, it's sort of outdoor rooftop space on, you know, the two parts of the uh, Time Warner Center building. Um, but again, as, as uh, Lindsay said, this is all, uh, you know, strictly private Deutsche Bank space for only for employees and guests. Okay. One, one quick, quick note, note is that the application still says Google, Google, Google as, the as the landlord, and that should be Deutsche Bank. Bank. Maybe that should just hold over, over from the, 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 the application. You have a huge echo, and I couldn't understand what you said, Wendy. She said the application still says Google, when it should say Deutsche Bank. <laughs> I'm, I'm finally reconnected, everyone. This is Lindsay Farina. I'm not sure how much you, you heard of my introductory statement. I lost my connection. We did hear the introductory, but uh, there was one question right now. Wendy, would you want to repeat that? Can you hear me? Hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Okay, great. We had, we had it. It, it was just, just that the landlord, landlord says Google, Google and, that and that should be Deutsche, Deutsche Bank. Bank. So just, so just pointing that out. Google is going to sue them for infringement. <laughs> did Google ever have that space? No. No. no, no, I don't think so. They've never been uptown like that. I'm trying to figure the, the where are the, the 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 terraces, Frank. You can um, see. It. Did you see the map? Um, I'm the trying to see on. the map, but for whatever reason. I'm sorry, everyone. I kept losing my connection. Where's the map? You're back. I'm back. Um, so the terraces are on. Are they attached to the ninth floor? But they are facing what? Frank, do you know what? They're facing. They're, they're facing. Street, is it? They're facing actually Columbus Circle. That you'll see how it curves around the building. Oh, I see. So yeah. it's facing Columbus Circle. So they they are not going to have any music, right? So what they had planned was. Most events will have absolutely no music. There is not a sound system um, in the building. Um, this is just corporate offices for Deutsche Bank with catering services um, that will not be open to the general public at all. What they would like to do is on very rare occasion have some ambient sound via a keyboard player. Um, the keyboard player would bring their own speaker but this would not be the type of entertainment where people are going to stop what they're doing and watch a performance. It's really just light background music and it would be kept at a background level where people could continue talking and enjoying their meal um, with that behind them. So yeah, you'll, get, you'll have to, is that specified in the, in the form, Frank, that it's it background? Is. It is, yes. Okay. And they're only looking to go up until 9 p.m. So there would be no um, late night amplification or disturbances in the neighborhood. Obviously, they need that money to recover for the tr from the Trump uh, issues. <laughs> <laughs> OK. If there are no other additional comments or questions, Frank, can you remind me what we talked about at the site visit? I don't remember. Tweet, were you at, on the site visit yeah. as well? Yeah, with uh, with Wendy, I think. Oh, Wendy. Yeah, no, we, we just talked about the music. Um, we we um, Lindsay was going to try to figure out if these spaces had been used before. Did you, Lindsay? 
Um, so I actually, I have all the details we discussed. You had asked um, for us to sort of get an idea of what's on each level of the building. So if, you are, if you're interested in that information, I do have it. Um, previously, the ninth floor was operated by Restaurant Associates, the same applicant. It was used as a cafe, but the terrace outdoor portion was not in use as part of the premise. It was just um, an area where you can walk out, but there was no dining. Okay. Christine, it, it seemed like given the Columbus Circle traffic noise, this wasn't going to Add yeah, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about it. I just wanted to see that uh, okay. there would be background. It was specified to be background. Yep. And we did notify the neighboring residential area. Um, Frankie had asked that we at least bring a copy of the notice to the doorman and that um, was done on Friday. Great, thank you. Christine, are you int introducing a resolution? Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Present not eligible, abstaining. I think it passes. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. No, Thank, you. You still Thank you. Yes, I am. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye